back to two guys one game pad i am cybermark sig also just known as sig and we are here with the short king himself roggle <laughs> <laughs> you learn one new thing about me and all of a sudden that's how we kick off the podcast that is his that's his whole identity now to me he's a short king don't worry ladies man. he's taken and she could probably take you I've seen pictures. No, I'm not a tall man. By not, any means. He is not. My voice is louder than I am tall. Yeah, if he Does sounds, that make sense? If he sounds like the you know average male, 5'10, 5'11. Uh no. No, he's uh he's barely taller than my kid. Yeah. That's not true at all. Uh, I don't she... think. <laughs> You're only a foot think... like three inches taller. <laughs> Than my five year old. That's a gigantic five year old. She she's not even the tallest in her class. There's a girl who's a whole like head and shoulders above her, and she, that girl comes up to like my freaking chest to point. I'm just like, I don't like that. You need like, who the fuck is your daddy? I don't know what the what's in the water in Kansas, but you might want to get some shit checked out. Well, I mean, it's not like Missouri. We don't have any <laughs> chemical radiation going on. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's seeped over into Kansas. So it happens. Uh, yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, it's it's been a while, but the sign is still up down in um, Aggieville, which is where all the bars are at here in Manhattan. Um, funny dad joke was, is it called Missouri or Misery? It spelled pretty much the same. I was like, oh, I need to take a picture of this <laughs> and send it to Roggle. Mm -hmm. Sent to that Missouri born and raised kid over there. I was like, I love this. <laughs> I love this joke. Stupid dad joke got me so well. Like, I was driving too. So I saw, I was like, <laughs> uh, pay attention to the road. <laughs> and that's funny. Uh, I can't, I can't take a picture. No text and driving. Hands for me. The old, the old misery jokes. What's funny is I haven't heard that joke since elementary. I'm not gonna say what year that is because I really don't like talking about the, my age anymore. Not that I feel old. I just you're older than me and shorter. So he said six inches shorter. And ladies, you know how important six inches is. I don't know, I've seen a lot of different <laughs> things where they say three inches is long, so I don't I don't want to hear it. I love all those TikToks and videos. Oh, this is uh -huh. this is huge. And damn right it is. Yep. Okay. Well, I've been told <laughs> it's not at the bar. You just remember that. Just remember that later. I just, just remember you said this was huge. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to show you something bigger later. <laughs> what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Anyways, crazy shit. It's still, it's still October during this episode. Um, so, you know, we're still going to try this. We're going to tr try. Heavy emphasis on the word try. To focus or say within the Halloween theme of stuff. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that is kind of game plan. If you didn't watch the first two episodes, definitely recommend go watch them. The first one. We covered uh, horror movies. Second one we did, you know, scary horror thriller video games. Lots of tangents on that one. Lots yes. of tangents on that one. <laughs> yes, there were uh, quite a few. <laughs> so tonight, I think we're going to, again, we'll see how this all goes. It may go this way. It may not go this way. Uh, but let's get into a little bit of, you know, both what both of us did and see who can relate. And you can literally let us know if you relate by commenting on the podcast itself, letting us know. But what we did each individually as children growing up during Halloween, what our tradition was, our family traditions, and then, of course, now us as adults, you know, me a proper full-size adult and someone who shrunk in the washer adult. <laughs> what our what our traditions are now with our, ch our own children and our so many others. Oh man, I got so many short jokes lined up now too. Oh my god. Oh, it's gonna be so good. 
I'm, I'm you're just mad because I can still go trick or treating and you can't. Have you seen some of these kids? They look just like me, but like 12 years younger. Yeah, but you put me that's in a actually, costume, you can't tell. That's only 20 years old. Like 15 <laughs> years younger. <laughs> there's, kids, there's kids that are my, in my kids' grade that make me look young. Full, full beards and I'm not gonna, everything. I'm not going to name the school, but there is a high school that I deliver food to quite often throughout the week via DoorDash. And one, if you've never done DoorDash, it's you know, just food delivery service. But when you deliver to a school, you just drop the food off in the office. At least at this school. I don't have to wait around for the kids or anything. But I dropped food off one day. And it was like a week ago, two weeks ago. And this full-on kid comes in and looks like a freaking teacher we're talking about. He has a really, like, decent beard going on. You know, not lengthwise, just, you know, it's a beard. And he has long hair. I'm just like, how fucking old are you? <laughs> and I'm just, like, I'm minding my own business, put the food up there. And I hear the front desk lady talk to him. And voice doesn't sound like he's developed yet. Fairly high-pitched voice still. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever, 2022. Lots of different things could be happening. Yeah. But I noticed the jacket he was wearing was a freshman letterman jacket. So he's at least a sophomore. I was like, oh, my God. This kid that's tall as me, I was like, you fucking giant. God damn. Oh, my God. Oh, you look way too old. Times have changed. I mean, since the way... Kids look now compared to how they were when I was growing up. Man, it was uh, way different. I think I had maybe one or two kids in my grade that were that had a beard or mustache or like that, and then that was about it. It seems like every kid now in high school has a beard and a mullet. Oh now. my god, the fuck! That's mullet. the thing. I was hoping that died. Like that. that oh no, was, that was not. That wasn't really. That died near like the beginning of our generation. It still was kind of a technically a thing, just wasn't a big thing. Oh, I had one when I was real young. No. My, I rocked, my, parents, my parents made me do it. I rocked the same hairstyle for probably 13 to 15 years. Just, uh, what, what's it, a seagull? Basically short hair along on top, and you just have the, the front bite. Yeah, see, I didn't get that until high school. All my other ones were parted in the middle, shaved up underneath on the sides. That's what it was. <laughs> so I guess it wasn't 15. I had that from like 5 to 15, maybe 14. And then freshman year, summer before freshman year, I had significantly longer hair than I do now. I do mean significantly like shoulder length. For you to be like down to your butt. But yeah, it was. <laughs> no, it, I, have, I have photos to prove this too. They're all blocked or locked out so no one can find them because I was stupid. I uploaded a few of them on social media, Facebook back then, and they're all locked. So you can't find them. You can't find them. Because they're for my viewing pleasure only. <laughs> so, But I thought that was like, oh man, rebel, whatever. You know, military family. But mm -hmm. now I see all these fucking bullets. I'm like, I want to punch each and every one of you. It's not a good hair style. It's not a good look. It looks stupid and trashy. Ugh. Eight bullets. With the passion. But man, they, uh, they rock them like crazy. They try to. Oh my the, gosh. The there's... problem is when they decide, and again, high schoolers and even college kids, decide to do a mustache with the mullet. Because you look one of three ways. You look like trailer trash. You look like a wannabe Joe Dirt, but more on the pedo side. Sorry, maps. Or you look like a full-blown registered person. Yeah. And I'm just like, no. Because it's all pencil thin, it's not full, it's not connected. Like, it's just... Let your, let your testosterone hit a little bit harder. Let the hair grow out. Oh, my God. So many. And they there's yeah, there's there's a lot. They rock them hard. I couldn't I couldn't do that. There's no way. Not many I see have mustaches. I don't think I've seen maybe a couple around the high schools here, but 
yeah, there's a lot that have molds. A lot of them more of are, are the football players have a lot more of them oh, that we've noticed. But ours are cross country. Okay, it just looks really stupid was... when you see them running and their hair just. <laughs> And they have that little pencil stash. It's like, <laughs> yeah. The only reason why you win the race is because your opponent's running in front of you, and they're looking back, and they're like, <laughs> "That stupid butt. Oh, yeah, they're running in terror. That was <laughs> get him away, get him away. It may, maybe, I mean, things clearly change, but maybe it was just my school. But in my high school, we were not allowed to have facial hair. While playing sports of any type, football, basketball, tennis, uh, we didn't have soccer, uh, track, baseball. You just you not allowed to have facial hair. Oh, that, you couldn't have facial hair. Oh, that was part of the the code, the dress code, whatever. And we didn't have a very strict dress code, so a lot of us had five o'clock shadows, and that was the closest we got. But if you had like a full drawn out mustache, the coach would be like, "You either can go shave it off or not play." But we didn't really? have a lot of people have it until maybe senior year. And at that point, the coaches were like, eh, you're senior. Not much we can do. Yeah. Yep. I have, huh. I can't think of a single person. And there's not many in my high school. So, I mean, graduating class 70, I would remember somebody who had a facial hair. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have very, we didn't have very many. I think we had 40 in ours, but we didn't have very many people with facial hair no. at all. So, Really weird seeing all these high schoolers and college kids now. I'm just like, oh my gosh, mm. they come out looking like full grown men. Like crazy. I want to say full grown men. Oh shit! But like they're cosplaying as a grown man. I was. <laughs> That's really the best way to put it. Looks like they're cosplaying as a full grown man. That's... Maybe, but man, it was like I just. With coaching football and all like that and seeing some of these kids that come through, man, there's some gigantic ass kids. Like they're bigger than the coaches and everything else. And they're wearing they're wearing knee braces and everything else to support their their body because they're linemen. Yeah. And so they've got full blown knee braces on, taped up, and I'm like, You how do you you're not even eighteen years old and you have knee problems? I mean like what in the hell? We I wore knee braces growing up. Like probably from twelve to even if I were doing that right now, I'd wear a knee brace on both of them. Like, hell, when, you know, when the pandemic hit, I, like, wife was off work for about four to six months. Uh, I was not working. And oh, I was doing my graphic design, because that's when that kicked off. But I remember my dumb ass going, I'm going to go run. I'm going to get back in shape. I'm running. Fucked my knee up on the second day. <laughs> I had military knees too, just bad knees in general. And I had to go yeah. buy a whole new brace and everything. Thankfully, Shit. it's not mechanical yet, but it's... <laughs> well, you know that you know what I mean by mechanical. Like they have the yeah. hinges and everything. Mine's just a, yeah. a, a sleeve brace compression. Oh, brace that's that's them, what so. they have. They've got the hinge. They got the, the full mechanical athletic. Thing. Yes, it's a hinged athletic knee braces. Hinged. It's not just a sleeve. There's some big boys then. No, it's some straight up mechanical Ew. Steve Austin style knee braces that they're wearing. Oh I mean, God. it's it's crazy. What? <laughs> that that that's fucking ridiculous. I'm saying it's it's weird, but you know, like like I said, times change, and so how how are you coaching these kids when they're freaking standing over you? Same way I. Mentored people, or what do you say? Trained people in the military. That was different. You had rank on your side, and all you had to do is, do you see this? Do you see this fucking rank? Well, I had to jump to make sure they saw it. But when I did, when I do coach, <laughs> well, that's the good thing about Velcro is you can rip it off and, and you can pick it up and put it in their you face. You hold on. <laughs> do you see this, sir? No, I can't. One second. Smith, get my step stool. It's over there. No, 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 behind the truck. Passenger side. Your other passenger side. God, you fucking moron. Yes, right there. Thank you. Just wait. Thanks. You see this? 
Yes, sir. Good thing was that I could easily yell at them when they were they were doing push ups, so it didn't matter. You see this? It's very easy. I don't know. That was not motivated when anybody yelled at me during push ups. I'm just like, this isn't working. Oh, no, I didn't yell at anyone when they were doing push ups. I made fun of them when they did push ups. I was an asshole. I'm an asshole. Always have been. Yeah, but are you historically speaking an asshole? Yeah. God, you missed the point, the joke from the other episode. I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. I don't remember the, that joke at all. Oh, my God. Historically speaking, surnames have a definition, and mine legitimately means, in a nice way, an asshole. We talked about it a couple episodes back. Whatever. I'm sure we did. We talked about That's it. That's why I record them so I can remember what I said. You don't listen to them. Yeah, I do. Every one of them. Yeah, I listen to every one of them. Oh, uh, I got told, by the way, because it's, it's spooktacular, it's spook season. Um, I'm saying a lot of these horror, I'm, I'm using heavy quotations here, horror movies and horror shows uh people are ranking like their top 10 top 100 all that stuff and one of them was goosebumps with jack black as a horror movie yeah as a horror movie it was pretty high up on their list too like they did a top 100 it was like top 50 it beat out a couple like classic ones are you fucking kidding me no i was like oh It's not a fucking horror movie. It's not. Whoa, categorized, it? yes, sure, whatever. No, no it's I don't, not. I don't, I don't think it's categorized as horror. That's not a, a... No. I mean, shit, Predator, Predator's categorized as a horror movie. To be fair, though. That should be, because if you go camp out in the woods in the Midwest or fucking up in Montana area, and you hear something that sounds like clicking, oh, that movie traumatized you. And you're just like, what the fuck is that? I will take the Blair Witch over this fucking thing. God damn. I'm not saying I want to fight him. I just don't, I don't see it as a, as a horror movie. It's an action, an action sci-fi movie, the way I look at it. Oh, it's actually categorized as horror comedy. Oh, wow. And not, not a, no. They need to go back and re-rate their fucking whole Disney characters and shit like that. That they're doing. That's, No. Is goose no, no, no. appropriate for seven year olds? This movie is meant to be scary, which is suitable for more of the older children, i.e., 13 and above. The CGI monsters are quite scary and will easily frighten children under the age of 13, and as well as some even slightly older children as well. And if you were, if this movie was to come out when we were kids, it would have been rated G. Hands down. Okay, hold on. Easy. Back then, a PG-13 movie would now be rated R. Some would be rated X. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was a lot. Because I remember I took a class, college, I took a class where we were discussing, like, oh, I don't remember the whole subject, but basically the ESRB, uh, the movie ratings, like how it all came to be, why they're there, uh, Oh, it was one of my business classes. There we go. And it was just basically saying why these exist, how they exist, who's in charge of them. And I remember again, we talked about movies, and one of them was listing just a bunch of like old 70s, 80s, and 90s movies. And like all this stuff would be bumped a minimum of one to two rating levels easily. And it's not even because of language, it's just the content itself being too graphic, too bloody, too sexualized. Too much nudity. And they say it would have been rated higher? Yeah. It's, the ratings were a lot more lax back then, though. And they're a lot more strict in the 90s and higher now. So what was PG-13 then would be rated R now because we were so much real, more Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, rated R now if yeah. it was PG-13 back then. Rated, yeah. yeah. There was what one I was like, saying, like if Yeah. There's... What was the movie? Because we had to do a uh, uh, writing... That's a very popular movie. I can't think of the name of it now. 
but basically it was rated PG back in like mid eighties. And by all classifications today, it would be rated R. Okay. Yeah. So I'm saying like anything like if, if that, if the Goosebucks movie was rated PG 13 now, it would have been rated G back then. Oh, yeah. Well, did they cuss at all? Cause any cussing bumped to a PG. I don't think so. I don't think they do. I don't remember the movie that came out too we long. Just wa- we, had, we just watched a little, a little uh, a few days ago. I don't think they did. Anyway, I don't that should never be on any horror movie list ever by anybody. It's rated PG right now, by the way. It is PG right now. Yeah, so no, it would have been G back then. It'd be Y. <laughs> y for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> or e. yeah. Yeah, yeah, white for TV. There was a few movies on that guy's horror movie list, and I was just like, I've seen all those. What? He's hard. Yeah, no. Like, my ass was even saying they're horror movies, but at the same time, I'm like, I'm going to write some of these down until Rockle on Tuesday. I'm going to write them down. So I've seen so many horror movies based on this guy's opinion. <laughs> and because it's on the internet, you know it's true. Oh, uh, yeah. Fucking horse shit. I don't even know. Ugh. Fucking goosebumps. Really? Dude, do you no. know? Speaking of goosebumps, do you remember uh it was nineties the choose your own adventure goosebumps? And books just I remember them. I Okay, I don't read books. Books in my opinion are are um well that's why they make movies. Um I agree with you on that now. But I did read some of the Goosebumps. I don't think I ever read any of the Choose Your Own Adventure ones. They were good. But I, I don't doubt they Yeah, I'm sure they were. But you're also talking about like school and AR points. So you read books to get points and points got you candy and shit. Yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't read Goosebumps book, books. They didn't count. They were considered... I, if I, I'm trying to remember, I think it's what it was. I don't think they were considered appropriate for us to read in order to get any type of credit or, you know, like that for. That's in Missouri. <laughs> you can look at one of two ways. Missouri cared more and Kansas didn't. Or Kansas believe in read wherever the fuck you want. It's a book. Sure, Kansas is like, as long as you're reading. You know how to read? You're fine. It's good. It's good. There's a chance of them actually know what's going on there. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make sure he knows his corn, his wheat, his cattle, his pigs. Make sure he knows what sorghum is and knows it by the two other different names. Make sure he knows this. That's all. That's all we care about. Yes. But did you did you see that the uh, the McDonald's came out with their uh, trick or treat bucket things again? Yep. Yes. Yesterday or today? Uh, today. We've had them since Sunday. Of course you have. Well, I picked them up during a DoorDash on Sunday, and then that's how I found out about them. And oh, I okay. And got them Monday for my children, slash myself. We haven't made it over there yet. Have you had the kids' Happy Meal yet? The, you mean the adult, uh, adult The adult Happy Meal. Yeah, you had kids' Happy Meal. I was like, yeah, several times, actually. My <laughs> yeah. kids don't eat all of it. <laughs> the adult Happy Meal. Uh, No. I mean, I've had the items in them because it's a big knife and chicken nuggets, you've had, but yeah. no, I haven't gotten the toy. So I got, we got one of them, and I got the four-eyed fucking Grimace, and it's like, and it, again, I don't, I, I wanted the one that makes no sense, the whatever knockoff weird Happy Mac, or whatever the fuck his name is. The, the yellow one? Oh. No, 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 the one that was never been, it, it was just invented for this. He's never been, and he, the one that has the hat on. He's not an actual character. He was never been seen anywhere. Oh, yeah. The one wearing the Ma- McDonald's t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's never been a character. Yeah, he's a cactus plant flea market item. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nope. Why Why would you not have Ronald McDonald? Now, on the, yeah. uh, on the box, it shows all the old characters, like all of them. Like the um, the mayor, I don't even remember him. Yeah. So I mean, it shows all of them on there. Yeah. I see but it does, and it throws that fucking weirdo in there. 
So how come? I'm, I'm looking at the picture. How come? Uh, they all have four eyes. I don't know. I oh, I've okay. tried Ron, to. I was gonna say except for Ron McDonald's, but I see they just gave him little black dots. So, because his face is painted white, so doing a white eye. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. The, this little fucking weird character thing is... I don't get it. I don't know what Cactus Buddy and friends are, but I know it's something they partnered up with. Mm -hmm. I love everyone's like, I'm so confused by this. Oh, yeah. Because I don't understand why they have four eyes. What's the point of the four eyes? It's part of the cactus plant flea market. Uh, what? Thing. So you become deformed? I don't know. I don't know. I don't like know I don't... Cactus, cactus plant flea market. What the fuck is that? So... Who knows? Like, just looking at them, it's, it's so weird. But anyways, my whole point of it was that they're, they came out with those pails again. And it kind of reminded me of the shit that we used to carry around when we were younger. That's because it's the like, shit we used to carry around when we were younger. We had, well, I never had one of those growing up. Oh. I didn't have a McDonald's anywhere around us. My town didn't either. We went, we drove to an hour away to Wichita or Hutch. So my my parents are not gonna not gonna drive. You know, I think it was like forty five minutes for us to get me a fucking pail when they could just hand me a pillowcase. We did have a pillowcase. That's about all. That's all. That's about all we ever had. We did have the stupid pumpkins that everybody that every everybody still has. But even the majority of them, we had a lot of pumpkins or. Pillowcases. That was the majority of what we had. We had, and I mean, we only got the McDonald's one because my dad was stationed at McConnell, which is in Wichita, and that's where we had grocery shopping. So we would occasionally get either McDonald's or whatever my mom wanted at the time, mm -hmm. but that was like far and few in between. Mostly, you know, my dad would have to be on TDY, and she'd be like, "Hey, yeah. we're gonna go eat out. Your dad's not here." <laughs> A lot of sketchy shit happened. Thinking back on it now, a lot of meals were had, <laughs> a lot of fast food was had, all because your dad's on TDY. <laughs> Come to find out, years later, he was not TDY; he was deployed because he also worked <laughs> Intel. So, a lot of secrets. Yeah. No, I mean, we had the orange, the orange pumpkin. I remember having the ghost from McDonald's, the ghost pail. For McDonald's. Yeah. Um, but I think we did. It had to have been a pillowcase of some sort because I'm thinking about like how we held it and it was a large like case or a large bag. So yeah. it had to have been a, a pillowcase bag, but you also optimize your like the amount of candy you can have because of that because it's a freaking huge bag. And it expands. Yeah. Your bucket does not expand. Your pillowcase expands a little bit. Yeah. So, and I mean, and our town wasn't that wasn't huge by any means, but I mean, we're trying to walk it. We couldn't walk the entire town in one night, so we kind of had our sections that we would go to. We knew which houses to go to and which houses to avoid, because you know, obviously, everybody's looking for. And it didn't happen very often when we were younger. It was the full size candy bars, but my God, everywhere around here now, it seems like where we live, almost everybody gives out full size candy bars in certain parts of town. Yeah. And we knew which ones houses to avoid because they gave away the shitty candy. Or they those gave fucking away apples. That or the popcorn that's, balls. That's, that's fucking. Those are both should be illegal. The fucking popcorn balls. And if you hit me an apple, and I have toothbrushes too. What's the best part about that? Is it was never a dentist. It was never a dentist. No. That gave it. it was like some old couple. You're like, are you a dentist? No. Yeah. Why are you giving me hygienic products in? Yeah. No, I don't want your fucking toothbrush. Take your ass back in there and give me a fucking full fun size <laughs> Snickers or something else. But we had ones that the shittiest candy that we ever were, were ever given was the orange or brown wrapper. Like, oh, the taffy, the peanut butter taffy. That fucking nasty shit is the worst thing no. ever. They were terrible. But we had yeah, people they're... who gave away good and plenty. And I hate black licorice. With the passion. Black licorice, is dead. Black licorice is nasty. And like, I, at least those peanut butter taffy thingies, that's what, that's, that's their flavor was peanut butter. I remember that. I remember I would, I would eat those. Cause again, 
I also had braces most of my childhood, and that was one candy I wasn't supposed to have. So again, if I'm not supposed mm-hmm. to have it, fuck you, I'm going to have it type thing. Those um, were gross. Oh, they were. They were not good by any means. They were like the last thing to be eaten. All my other candy was gone. I'd be like, ah. We used to throw them back at the house. Oh, no. no we, we, can't, we can't have done that. There's no way. We, we got down the street with them back. No. My, my town was literally about half a mile by half a mile. And if you include the outskirts, like where the farmland was, we hit a mile. And it was mostly owned by one family. So we could walk everywhere. And there was like a section of the town that just never participated in any of the uh, city events or village. Any of the town events or anything. I'm saying village because when I was overseas in Germany, I'm like, oh, where'd you grow up? I was like, you won't fucking know. It's fine, but I'm in Kansas. And like, well, how big was your city? Maybe 200 people. What? That's not a city. You're right. It's a town. No, that's not a town. That's not even a village. All right, let's let's stop, okay? Cut your shit out. We won World War II. Shut up and walk away. <laughs> But, like, it, it was probably half a mile by half a mile, give or take. And we could walk the whole thing. We did. Because, you know, there's only two main streets. Main Street and Ohio. Yeah. So, yeah. And we went to everywhere. Every night. Or, not every night. Uh, Halloween night. But you knew where all the really good houses were. Because it was the retirement section of the town. You know, we had the nursing home on one side. And then we had all the really old people who were no longer working retirement side. And it's just a little cul-de-sac. And they always gave away full-size candy bars. They gave away money. They gave away just random shit that, looking back now, it's good. But back then, you're like, what the fuck is this? And I was like, oh, that was a pretty good idea. But we had, there's one old lady. Uh, I think she passed away, so I think I can say her name. But Miss Pauline is what we called her. She lived right behind my family, and really sweet old lady. My young brother and I would visit her uh, occasionally throughout the week just to sit and tap, talk. And during Halloween, she would give away like full size plus, um, like change, but it was like twenty five cents, fifty cents because she knew the grocery store, literally just a hundred, two hundred feet away from her house, you could still buy candy for twenty five cents, fifty cents, or whatever. Or if you knew Raymond, you could go and get like two chicken strips for fifty cents, and you just be like, "Yeah, whatever. Here you go." So clearly, he was not in business to make a profit. Cause it did not last long, as I remember. He was gone by my teenage years. Not in the town of two hundred, no. 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 Well, I mean, I was inflation. <laughs> inflation. No, he had. I mean, he had all your basic necessities, but he had killer freaking um, um, chicken tenders, and like. Uh, if I were to say like a Lions Court or a Lions Diner, do you know what I'm talking about? A very Midwestern farmer thing, but you go to I don't know how to explain it. You're talking about like Lions Club? No, not Lions Club. Okay. They typically were like nearby, and that's where the Lions Club would get go eat or go get their food. But it's always inside of a grocery store. It's literally where you'd go get hot food, the hot deli section, but it's very okay. specific to small towns, like very small towns, mm-hmm. you would have it and it was better than gas station food and still home cooked food to a degree because it was such a small town that they could afford to physically cook the food every day and make fresh food. Um, but he had amazing food, like mozzarella sticks on point, uh, onion rings on point, chicken tenders were amazing, just everything. Randomly spaghetti if you caught him on a Thursday. Yeah, so our, we didn't have food liner. Like that's that we had. There we go. Food miner? Liner. Oh liner. Yeah. Yeah, no, we had we had gas stations. We had two gas stations owned mm. by owned by one family. Gas one on the north end and one on the south end. Or east and west. I don't know which one it was. East and west. But owned yeah. by the owned by the same same family. And we didn't have we didn't have any fast food in town no. at all. We had two restaurants 
they were just like small, small town style. You know, they had like their specials on Fridays, whatever, like their prime rib nights or whatever, stuff like that. It was like, it was a big deal. Like everybody would go up there for that. And then it yeah, wasn't until that. I think I got to, uh, it was maybe eighth grade or going into high school. We finally got a uh, pizza place in the gas station. And that was a huge deal. Yeah. Cause it was like, Pizza, like we didn't have when we could never order, you know, deliver pizza or like that. So we finally got one like that, and because you were just they like didn't right outside the radius too of like yeah. Pizza Hut or whatever. It was like thirty yep. minutes or less, and like you were thirty-two minutes away. Yep. That so we, nice. we have to get it as like we were in Kansas City. We'd have to order it and pick it up on our way back home. Yeah. And you know, by the time we get home, it's still thirty minutes after the, after it's done, and you're like. This is fucking cold, thanks. But you know, it was it was what it was. We end up eating it cold or just eating it warming it up and, and eating it then. Yeah. But once we got this, it was hot stuff pizza is what it was called. And there's still a few around the Kansas City area. I was like, it sounds familiar, but I can't it, guarantee I think you have the right place. So we had we had that one and then after a while we got a this in the same area we had a taco place. It was Jose Peppers, which was That's about right, yeah. Which is okay, but but I mean, getting the getting the pizza at that point was was like a lifesaver because we had something else other than the restaurant style stuff we had yeah. that we're all tired of eating because it's all the same thing, just burgers and fries and you know about the basic stuff. But, but it was see, nice. That that's where like again that's where our similar childhood styles, but drastically different because like. We didn't have a restaurant at all. The closest we got was this food liner inside of Raymond's grocery store. Again, he cooked the food. It was literally just this one man, 60 years old or older, easily. And he cooked the chicken nuggets, like all that. And you only could get for lunch, 11 to 1. If you came before or after, fuck you. You're not getting it. And that was maybe if he decided to cook it. If he was busy... So more than like four people in the store, yeah, you weren't, you weren't getting served. Uh, great. This was also the same grocery, the grocery store, where I I first remember finding out or being told about the Tootsie Roll shooting star theory. Oh, you got yeah, and he honored it. Like he was the one that fucking told. It. He's like, oh yeah, if you find a shooting star on it, you let me know. I'll give you a free one. My fucking really? ass. Oh yeah, I remember because my ass fucking pulled so many. Back to back to back, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna tell your mom you're having this many suckers." What? Because again, we all knew each other, small town. Yeah. Um, but like, he shut down probably my sixth or seventh grade year, maybe eighth grade year. So right before I went to high school, and then we had no restaurant, food, anything in that town at all until. My eighth grade year, or sorry, my senior year when I was getting ready to graduate, and there was a little shop that opened up, pizza shop called Elemento Pizza, and it was right around the time you could get a portable uh, pizza maker at home, and it's just like a little turntable that spun and mm. cooked the pizza very slowly. Yep. Um, if that dates me at all, you know, there we go. But first time it, they were out, and that shop opened up. A very, very much hole in the wall, like slightly bigger than my office hole in the wall. Tiny little, tiny little thing. And they were always busy. We're talking like every fucking day. Somebody was getting food. Somebody was getting pizza. They had three or four of the little pizza ovens. I'm using the word oven very here. Um, but they were always busy. It wasn't even good pizza, but it's the fact that there's a restaurant there. It was something different. Yeah. And... You couldn't get Pizza Hut. It was in Mays, and that was roughly 30, 30 minute drive if you drove you know, 75, 80 miles an hour. If you worked for Pizza Hut, you could not deliver to our town because they were 31 minutes away, technically. So they went. Yeah. yeah. But we would get them a lot. And by the time you got home, the food would be, you know, on the cooler side, not cold, but it definitely would be cooler to a point you could just pick it up and like scarf it down, which yeah. was nice going to Blockbuster on a Friday night, hitting up Pizza Hut, and then going home, eating it. So. Hey, those were nights that we would, because we didn't have video stores in town for a long time. 
<laughs> my town still doesn't back then. Still don't in that town. We did have we had we had two at one point, but it wasn't until we were probably middle school, I think. Yeah, but that I mean, we had that was all. I think we just talked about last episode or one before about the VHS tapes and all like that. But it's been a few episodes, but yes. <laughs> We're only on but episode yeah, 19, and it's almost like, oh, that's so slap. That was fucking that was long ago. Ago. It's not that long ago <laughs> now that we're doing a weekly, but yeah. Yeah, having those were those were the fun nights, but then also renting video games at the same time, too. Yeah. Because ours we could or consoles. Yeah, see, I was just gonna say we had we had a couple times where we could rent consoles, and I remember first time I ever renting a Sega Genesis and taking that back and playing. We rented that and we had Jurassic Park that when that came out. On Genesis. Yep. And that was that was fun as hell, but extremely annoying when you got to the waterfall portion of that game. I don't think I ever got past that. On the, air, off on the airboat. Squid. Yep. When you get to the uh, airboat, you're yeah. trying to get on the waterfalls. I was like, I remember the air the airboat and I remember never making it past that. I just be like, fuck this, fuck that. I hate this whole fucking game and be done with it. But I remember like we rented it in sixty four and Yeah. Uh, we only rented it because my good, like, best friend back then, he had an N64, and we did a LAN party. Him and I, well, him, his brother, myself, my younger brother, and then two of our friends did a LAN party, all with N64s, and, you know, big-ass tube TV. Yeah, so we had no idea what a LAN party was. We just knew that you could play four at a time on 64. We didn't know you could connect them or any of that stuff, because... We just like okay, here it is. Let's go. We didn't call it a land party back then. That was yeah. the thing. Like that was like that terminology came in like years later. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, okay, that makes sense. Local access network. Yeah. Right. Nobody had Wi-Fi. Yeah, so, oh god, no, no. <laughs> Dial up. God, yeah, I don't even. You know. <laughs> Welcome. You got mail. We didn't have any of that stuff. And then when we did have it, shit, didn't touch the phone, nothing. Pretty sure my dad would duct tape the phone to the wall when he was when he was on the internet. We didn't duct tape it, but if if my dad was on the internet or my mom was on the internet, I do know they would sometimes go over to the wall and just disconnect the line, the landline altogether from the wall. So then even if you picked the sucker up, it wasn't connecting. I remember getting in a lot of trouble doing it one time myself. You know I ever What would we need to call someone? I don't know. The internet. You can't. What? Talk about. Who do you need to call? Because you could call outside of our area. <laughs> no, it costs extra. They weren't paying that. Unless it was after 9, 8, 9 p.m. Then maybe, <laughs> maybe we had three minutes. Maybe I don't know when that shit happened for landline. Thinking about it, I just hey, we did. We, we talked like <laughs> no, we did. We wanted we... to call grandma or grandpa, or we wanted to call you know somebody literally the town over, ten minutes away. Get scolded of who did you call? I I just I just wanted to talk to Tom. How long were you? I don't know. Get the phone bill. You were off the phone for twenty two minutes. You don't pay the damn bills around here. That's expensive. Because it was like $2 or something for that. Or, or... Well, like when we wanted to talk to our grandparents, we had, a, we had a thing that we would we would call, we'd let it ring twice, and we'd hang up. Then they'd call us back, because they had pretty long distance. So we would call them, let it ring twice, then we'd hang up. And then we'd sit there and wait, like, hmm, did they, were, were they home? Did they hear it? Did they notice it? <laughs> did they hear it? So if they would, like, five minutes... We call him again. It ring twice. Hang up. And then sometimes my grandpa will be a smart ass because he want to mess with my dad. He'll be like, oh hi. I'm like, oh shit. Hang up. <laughs> <laughs> you you can get charged if it was so long, but like, oh, like grandpa God. grandpa answered. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. You guys you guys had to because my town had one, so your town had to have at least like two. But pay phones. Do you remember the old commercials of dial one eight hundred? You clearly do. Went. I have. You had I to think have, we have. You had to have a payphone unless your town was, was 
Yeah, there Christmas was. There was one. One there. Yeah, we had we had probably two or three that I can think of. I could tell but you I, without a doubt we had one. Two or it three. was at the grocery store. <laughs> Outside. Yeah, of I think we're about two or three. And man, there's one of was it. <laughs> Call and collect. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, okay. So kind of put it in perspective, like where the way like, around, not way around, but like so, like the my, way around. My house was on like the main drag. We were on uh, Ohio Street, so it's the main drag in and out of town. We were okay, literally right here, Water Tower, uh, grocery store. There was just an alleyway right here. That's it. And the phone, the payphone was here at the grocery store. <laughs> My younger brother and I, I remember so vividly clear, would go 1 800 661 and dial that home number. We're like, hey, Dad, where the fuck you calling me from? Uh, Raymond's. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at Raymond's. And they just hear a click. <laughs> One of the two things was going to happen. He was pissed and he was going to come get us. Because again, not even a block away. <laughs> or two, we were going to get in trouble when we got home. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> we were going to be in trouble. I remember prank calling so many, so many people with one eight. Oh, yeah. Like, do you accept this call? This collect call? Uh, no? Yes? That call. It's Logan. Do you accept the call from It's Logan? Yeah. Got so many friends in trouble for taking those phone calls. I don't know. So we didn't even use that. We just used whenever you say in your name, we, we put our message. They're like, yeah, I'm going to my buddy's house. I'll be there. I'll call you from his house. It's like it's Bob, baby boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you have a call from I'm going to my buddy's house. I don't know, because there's always a quarter in the payphone. Yes, always somewhere. Somewhere there is. No, it's fine. then there was always. I don't. I haven't seen a payphone in a while. It's been a long time since I've seen a damn payphone. Uh, where were we? Was it I Omaha? Or that's in Jacksonville. One of those two. A... One of those two. We saw a payphone. It's by Omaha. But that's yeah. a place of time forgot. The whole state is. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. That's probably where you saw it. I wouldn't doubt it. I think it was down in their place. old town district, too. That's what I'm trying to think of. Mm-hmm. They have a really nice candy shop down there, by the way. Go down to Old Town. There's a nice candy You're shop. Such there. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a child. You're such a kid. And you're short as fuck. Listen, you're such a you're such a little kid. That's a big bag of gummy bears. <laughs> Is it though, or am I just small? I mean, you're small. <laughs> I got you beat though. It's fucked. What is? What are those ones? Bay breads. Oh, there's. Oh, okay. Thought they were gummies or something like that. But I still don't have Skittles gummies up here. I, I can find. Yeah, they don't have them here either. I was gonna ask you if you remember when I got those last time. It was around our first episode. Easter then. Okay, Close to, so we gotta wait. Yeah, around, we gotta wait a few months. <laughs> yeah, it was around that time. I'm just saying because I've been to Five Below several times this last week looking for these damn Skittles. And I was like, I know they exist. And I was like, wait, shit. When was this? When did I talk about this? Yeah. Maybe so you I, showed them to me everything. I'll get them. I'll get them. But no, like, so fucking big of a tangent. Anyways. It's important to know the layout of my town because it's small. It's very small. But like, I don't know. Halloween was always a game changer and just general for us because again, it's a small town. Mm-hmm. So, but do you remember any of your costumes? Sorry, let me rephrase that. Do you willfully remember any of your costumes? So, I'm sure... Me, like every other... Eh, don't you throw me underneath the bus. Me, medium to low-income family had... Okay, that's fair. The ghost of the bed sheet with the eyes cut out. I was that a few times. I was a vampire many, many times. 
don't know why. I just love being vampires. And then blood capsules came out, and then I was fucking game on from there. That was game changer. Because I, because I could pop that and have blood shoot out of my mouth, and then stain all my clothes. So mom was extremely happy about that too. Those were disgusting. They game tasted changer. horrible. It was like Robitussin. I swear that's what it was. No, no, I remember Robitussin tasting better, and I remember oh, having Robitussin. Oh, oh it's, those things were horrible. I also but they were awesome. I tap a lot. <laughs> I you say, know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I ghost, vampire, and then I got older and I kind of got into doing my own makeup and trying to do like uh, what the hell is it? Uh, not prosthetic. What the fuck is it called? Prostitute. Rubber. Yeah, I was prostituting. No. Uh. Uh. He's only five the, five guys. Give him a chance. The, I fucking hate you. It's a fucking. Why can I think of it? It's latex. Oh, I started doing like latex and then scarring and stuff like that and trying tomato, to make tomato, up. Tomato, latex, prostitute. Yeah, it was, it's latex goes with prostitution and yeah, that's. I was thinking I don't know why prosthetic came in my head, but uh, latex. I did a lot with liquid latex and stuff like that when I got older, and then I started doing other people's makeup to like for like zombies and cuts and all that shit, which was around high school and then but like for the main part it was i don't really remember any big costumes i know i had to make a lot of mine so for like i don't a, really had for like a better understanding though because mine's gonna be slightly different where are you chronologically speaking inside your family oldest youngest single child oldest okay so yeah you you were the trial baby mm, yeah. yeah i mean it's fine that's really what it is i'm the second youngest with a 10 year gap between myself and the oldest. Mm. So by the time I was 10, we were already done with the ghost and vampire stuff because the oldest was kicked out of the house. Well, that's the oldest was out of the house. Second oldest was out of the house. And the third oldest was getting ready to graduate in like a couple years. So we had a little bit more money on my military dad salary. A little bit. But we did. I did prostitute costume. <laughs> costume. Never been with the prostitute. Costume. I I <laughs> costume. So you were a pimp one year, and then I was a pimp one year. That was high school, though. I was high school. Yeah. No, I remember the only one like I. I remember a lot of like my little micro, micro ones, you know, very easy to do. Uh, but I do remember middle school, well, what's now middle school again, my whole school, K through eighth grade was one school system for me. Uh, but like sixth, seventh grade year, I remember going, trying to go as Danny Zuko from Greece. Greece. And I was, a, I was allowed to grow my hair out. August, September, and part of October to get the swirly hair. That's where I can, you know, go and. <laughs> uh, but I remember, like, none of that was bought. We found a black jacket of my sister. My sister's a big gal. She's short, but she's a big gal. She's like you're barely taller than her. She's five two, five three. But. <laughs> But she had a black jacket. And now knowing, you know, where... Anyways, she had a black jacket, and she didn't wear it anymore. And I remember my mom painting the T-bird. Yeah. And writing the T-birds on it. And then uh, my brother, my younger brother, went as um, Zuko's best friend. I can't think of his name now. God damn it. I've seen the show way too many fucking times. But anyways... We both went as the T-Words. And we're talking like, that is so easy because all it took was a little bit of black eyeliner, black hair, and a black shirt with a black jacket and jeans. Yeah. Yeah. And that was considered too expensive back then for us because my mom had to go buy the paint for the back of the jacket. I yeah. Not being like we do this, you have to, like, you may be Danny Zuko next year. So, just be aware. 
Okay. You better not grow because you're wearing the same jacket. Pretty much. I was a I was a ninja. I do remember my mom was a ninja. ninja. And I remember wearing it to school, but nobody else dressed up. So I had to leave school and go back and get dressed until I then came back and that was awesome. <laughs> so yeah, one of those days of like, oh yeah, ready to go, get to school. What the fuck? Nobody's in the costume. Everybody's in normal clothes. Everybody had brought their costume because they were going to change into it. Nope. Me, I was ready to fight crime, whoop everybody's ass from the get-go. First bell, I'm kicking ass. Nope. Halfway through after the first bell, my ass was back home changing. <laughs> this is after I'm in the I'm in the office telling my mom, hey mom, um, so nobody nobody dressed up. I need you to come get me. And her no. <laughs> Tough shit. I'm not coming to get you. Fuck. You can walk or you can just stay. Like I need, I need clothes. I don't give a shit. You said you wanted to wear it. Like, damn it, please. <laughs> but see, but see, looking back now, I have a very strong feeling that if your daughter or son were to be like, "Hey, I need you to come get me. I need to change your clothes." Whatever. I thought we were wearing this. That's not happening. How likely are you realistically to be like, "Hey, I told you that's another day," or you chose to wear it, whatever? And be like, same response, basically. Tough shit. It depends. There are times where I'm like, tough shit. But there are other times, like, if that was the case, I would probably go get them. There are other times where I would have... It depends on the on, on what happened or what the whole conversation was before. But, yeah. It would depend. I guess you're telling your kids to fuck off and you're staying there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, time will tell, but that's the mentality right now. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean, hell, my my daughter was sick; like she had a fever, like ninety nine and a hundred. And the school nurse called, and she's like, "What do you want to do?" I was like, "Well, I I know this because my daughter really hates missing school. Like, mm-hmm. I had to hear about it for days. About I miss school. I don't want to miss school. So just crying. I was like, "Hey, look." She's really going to be upset if she has to miss school. Ask her if she wants to try to tough it out or if she wants me to come get her. Yeah. And of course, my daughter's like, I stay. I stay at school. I stay at school. I went and got her 20 minutes later. Hey, she spiked 102. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. Just put my son down for a nap. Fucking Christ. Okay, I'll t- tell her I'll be there in a bit. Come on, Ron. Get up. Let's go. <laughs> that your sister. I, I mean, I, I, time would tell, but I don't. We I never had that issue. But then again, my mom was also the computer teacher, so that definitely would not fly with me. But if I need to walk home, I also could because it was like three, four blocks away, maybe four blocks away. Yeah, so we were four blocks away too. But I couldn't just leave school. They wouldn't just let us leave. Ah, oh, no, everybody knew everybody. All the teachers knew all the kids. All the teachers knew the parents. Yeah. And they knew my mom yeah, was there, so if I had to go home, it was likely because my mom was in the middle of the class mm-hmm. or lunch, and they didn't want to take me home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so we didn't have that that luxury. We didn't have that one, so we had to literally get picked very up. small town. Very small yeah. town, so, yeah. True. But, like, again, that's why, like, we enjoyed Halloween so much, because Mount, uh, mm-hmm. all of us from Mount Hope would be very much connected and you didn't have a lot of issues with bullies trying to take your candy because if a parent saw you and there was definitely some times where older kids would try to take a younger kid's candy and there'd be a parent that's like, hey, how are you doing? I was, I was, no, give him his candy back. I was just looking at it and seeing what he had. I'm sorry, mister, whatever your name is. I'm sorry, mister. Here you go. I'll get you back tomorrow. You better bring that fucking candy. <laughs> but I, I, I always thought Halloween was interesting growing up. And 
I remember more along fifth grade year, middle school, of all the scare tactics or scare um, campaigns out in the media. Razor blades. Oh, God, yes. Uh, pot. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think one year we had heroin. Somebody said they were injected. Being injected in it. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, that's that's been there. Granted, back then, everyone was like, oh, my God, especially small towns. Like, oh, my God. How could this have happened? Blah, blah, blah. There was no cases. There was no evidence of this actually happened. It was all a scare tactic. But looking back now, on um, people like knowing people, people I'm very uh, technically related to, I like a druggie would never put that in the candy. They're not sharing. No. It's a high, it's a high value dollar that, of stuff they're pumping into your candy. Yeah. So, no, it's not. It's not going to happen. Just be like, oops, shit. That was the wrong gummy bears I just gave that kid. No, that fucker (laughs) has. Bring those back. (laughs) That fucker has those special gummy bears Mm -hmm. somewhere else where it's not easily available Mm -hmm. in case, you know, the cops come over. So, like, when when you would go trick or treat when you were a kid, the your, I'm assuming your town was, the houses were fairly well decorated or they had the kind of the cardboard cut out stuff that they put in their windows if you remember those i do remember those um so like decoration wise visual wise yeah uh the you could definitely tell how old the family was or how old the parents were there if it was an older family you know 60 up they definitely had like lawn decoration uh near my older years they had like the trunks popped open there was candy there with the animatronics jumpers and everything there would be some that just have like the little, um, we always call them uh, darts style, where they just stick in the ground. And that was it. Very basic, cheap ass shit you could get from oh, Walmart yeah. for like a dollar. Um, and then you had some who had like the window decals, the cardboard cut out that looked like maybe a child did it. Uh, but it was a wide variety of it with how small of a town it was. Because again, the only people who lived in this town were ones who just wanted a place to raise their children. So everyone worked outside of town. Uh, not military. I think my dad was the only military there. And then uh, people who were just kind of retiring. And they just wanted a nice, peaceful area to kind of broke. So, yeah. Um, but we didn't, you know, we had a wide variety of it. But I don't remember too many houses, though, honestly, being decorated. I just remember... They all had their lights on because back then, and I think it's still supposed to be now, but I know it doesn't work in my town anyways. If the porch light is on, that means you have candy and you will give candy to trick-or-treaters. Again, not in my town that I'm in right now. Uh, But I remember that was always the deal. If they don't have their lights on, you do not go up to the house at all. Don't do it. Uh, Few exceptions in the town everyone knew because... They handed out the really good candy bars or the really good stuff. But yeah. you had to have basically been willing to risk your life, potentially. Maybe you're going to get kidnapped. Who knows? Town of 200. You, you were going to be discovered sooner or later. But you had to go knock on their door, trick or treat, and they'd give you something. Uh, but I don't remember a whole lot of decorations with the exception of like very few people, mostly older people. See, we have... We had quite a few decorations. We had some of the old school stuff, like the cutout, like cardboard style that you'd have, the window decals. We did have some that would kind of go above and beyond with like dry ice. They put in like a cauldron style to have like the you know yeah. witches, witches brew style, whatever like that. Uh, some would have strobe lights, and those are the ones that kind of knew what they were doing with lights like that. Not just some guy in the back just going over a light. And then we had a couple also that would make their own haunted houses. But they because they had a gigantic ass porch that wrapped around their houses, they could do it. Yeah. Because nobody's going to your house, obviously, at that point. But they would have those. And we had a fair, you know, a pretty good time doing that. But like going around and doing some of that stuff was part of the fun of it. And obviously the candy was was the biggest deal of it. But seeing some of that stuff going around and enjoying it now. But seeing seeing how it is now around my town, it's way different. 
obviously they do they decorate a lot more there's obviously so many more mechanical electrical style decorations of anything pretty much you think of the inflatables yeah. that i cannot stand that need to be in because I, I can't stand inflatables they drive me nuts why i don't know it does bug me i hate them i don't know why they just it's just like, it's lazy decoration i think is why is why even though I those fuckers I, are hundreds of dollars i don't care i mean some are like barely a hundred dollars you can I, get a trash bag and do the same thing Shut your you can decorate off. a trash bag the same way Look, just because you're five five and a trash bag can fit your whole body in it does not mean it's a good decoration. I'm sorry. Am I am I insulting your front yard right now? No, but I can't afford those fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> so go get some trash bags and you can have them. I can't, I can't afford that had, right now. We had the pumpkin trash bags where we fill, we put the leaves oh, inside of it. it. Yeah, we would have those. I have not seen one of those in a very long time. We had those last year, uh, or two years ago at our old house, because we actually had leaves we could rake up, and it was just leaves, you no know, conventional sticks. I can't do that here, because there's fucking like two or three walnut trees in my backyard, so it's walnuts and leaves, and there's not a whole lot of leaves. You can't walnuts. have the piles, the piles of leaves covering up the walnuts. Hey, kids, jump into this. <laughs> <laughs> or break their back. I fucking almost twisted my ankle when I was smoking that brisket the other uh, for my birthday back in September because there was a random walnut that fell during my live stream and it just so happened to be my pathway to walk. And by the way, my smoker is only like 10 feet from my back door and I freaking tripped on a goddamn walnut. I just rolled my ankles like, God damn it. Walnuts are no joke. They're not. They're I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to be hit by one. Because I have squirrels here who throw those fuckers. Yeah. I think they stink, too. They do. They do. They stink. It's like shit. But did you have... Did you have to go around and did you, did you do jokes? Like, that was something new when I moved up... When I moved to Iowa. Dude. We never had... I never heard of jokes. That wasn't something that we ever had. I, what, and I what? never heard of Beggar's Night until I moved to here, up here, either. Beggar's Night. I haven't heard of that. But when you say jokes, do you mean, like, knock-knock jokes and dad jokes? Or are you talking, like... They, they say like the house. no 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 like okay. trigger like trick or treat and then you're supposed to tell them a joke. No, we didn't like, do that. No, see that was that was something that I'd never heard of until I moved to to Iowa, obviously until I had kids and start taking around like, oh tell me a joke. I'm like, hold up, what? You want jokes? We have to work for this shit? Like it used to be like trick or treat, give me the candy. It's, yeah. And then it's like that was that's it, that was it. Wow. Like I didn't know I had to think about this stuff. The fuck is Baker's night? That's what they call it up here. It's like you're begging for candy. Oh. Now it's referred to as beggar's night. And that's it's not that's always on. I it's that's what they call it. So I've never heard it time so I moved up here. Like, oh yeah, well, uh we're taking the kids out for beggar's night. And I'm like, well, what? What's beggar's night? Yeah, that sounds very bad. And they're like, it's on the it's on the twenty sixth. I'm like, what what is that? I'm like, uh, I was like, I was planning on taking my kids trick or treating on Halloween. They're like, oh, we don't, there's nothing on Halloween. I'm like, what the fuck? What do you mean there's nothing on Halloween? That's fair. That's fair. So, come to find out that a lot of places up here don't do it on Halloween. Now that but, where we're at now, they do it on Halloween. But did, growing up, did you guys always do it on Halloween? Yeah, no matter what. Right, it was so, always 31st. So, we did. I can think of one specific time we didn't do it on Halloween night, and that was only because, like, that Friday or Thursday or whatever, because, you know, Midwest, Kansas, Missouri area even, fucking October's weird as shit. Uh, but we ended up getting a really nasty snowstorm that was supposed to hit us on October 31st, and we were already planning to not have school that day. And oh, yeah. Again, very small school, so we can figure this shit out really quick. Um, so I remember them saying, no, we're going to do it that weekend, Sunday. I think Halloween was like a Monday or Tuesday, whatever. So we were already anticipating, that, like, we're just going to bump it up two days early or a day early, whatever. Yeah. But that was because of weather. Now, now that I have kids, or not now, because, you know, they're fucking five and three. Uh, but since I have kids, I found out, like, I love my town, the way they do shit without Halloween. Because it's not just Halloween night. 
and very seldomly is it Halloween night that we actually go trick or treating. Um, and that's pretty much dead here. But again, college town. So you don't have a lot oh, of yeah. you don't have a lot of families that participate in trick or treating, traditionally speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can tell you literally starting um, October twenty third, I think is our first event. It's the zoo. They have a whole Halloween thing event going on at the zoo. And we're going to do that. And they'll be able to do trick or treat. They get to interact with the animals. They get to do some events, party events, all that stuff. Really cool stuff. And then from the 23rd, technically the 19th, um, but or the 20th, sorry, from the 20th to the 31st, there's an event, an event of some sort going on every day of the week, mm-hmm. sometimes multiples. And again, having kids now, especially with how everything is in today's world, I thoroughly enjoy how we do it nowadays, again, in my town, because, you know, we have the spooktacular event, which is Halloween at the zoo, on Sunday. Uh, there's a couple uh, little mom and pop shops doing some Halli- Halloween events throughout the week. And then come Friday, that Friday, we have um, the east side of town, strip malls is doing trick or treating at night it's where you literally just basically walk down the strip mall area everyone's handing out candy there's okay. a trunk or treating event going on that saturday that same saturday there is also uh the west side of town where we live and you go through all the strip mall area and there's just a bunch of events cops firefighters emts uh they're all handing out candy all the shops are handing out candy there's events going on um and then Sunday, there's another event going on. And then Halloween, there's more events going on at the mall. Like, there's always something, even High V, which is another reason why we shop there so much. Our High V has an event where we can go inside and do a bunch of Halloween events inside of our local High V. Which, again, if you're a parent and you don't want to, you know, sit out in the fucking goddamn cold, trick or treating, walking house to house, uh, which again, we don't get to do here too often. All these little small events, like I love them, because then it's a uh, hey, go put your costume on. It's not one night a year now. Now it's seven, eight, nine, ten nights a year. We get to yeah. dress up for a solid week or whatever, and get to take my kids out. I enjoy it, of course, because I am a stay-at-home dad, and that gives my wife a reason to leave work or take off for work. And we get to just kind of, you know, hey, kids, go dress up as whatever you are. Some years we participate, some years we don't, and it's just. In as a parent, I thoroughly love this. I think it's awesome. Kind of wish we had it back then. Maybe it existed. Maybe towns did it, but my town didn't because of you know how fucking small we are. You could throw a stone and hit the other side of town. And be like, ah, I hate your house. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna assume you guys have to have something like that up in your area. Yeah, we do. We have. There's a lot more now. Like the zoo does something up here. Hy-Vee does the same thing as well. There's truck or treating up at the the uh, military base that's around us. They do one. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of different stuff that they they do. There's so many different activities. And even their school does one too. They yeah. get to go and they can dress up, but they can't wear a mask because that's frowned upon. Well, <clears throat> yeah. So, but you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that they get to do. And then, thankfully, the way that where we're living at, we're our property line uh, backs into the next town. So we're technically within two towns. So one typical will have one on the 30th. The other one will have one on 31st. So they get two nights of trick or treating. So they get to go to one town and then they go to the next town, which is literally just past our, our backyard. Yeah. And they get to do it that way too. So that was, they really like that one and it's, it's fun. And if they, if I don't want to go, I'll pass out candy. I like passing out candy. It's just it's fun seeing all the kids that come up with all the different costumes and shit. That's what that's what like my wife and I miss, and that's why like personally that's why I miss. Because as a high schooler, when I was no longer trick or treating, I thoroughly enjoyed passing out candy because I love seeing all these costumes and everything. Of course, yeah. Back then, it was again even drastically different from when I was trick or treating. Just literally four or five years prior to that. And seeing all these awesome costumes, all the latex coming out for the uh, superficial makeup designs. Like, it was just really cool. 
And when my wife and I got a house and we had our first child and, you know, Halloween, I'm talking like when she was still, what, seven months old at that time? Yeah, seven months old. We didn't go trick-or-treating or anything because she's seven months old. Don't drag your fucking children out if they're under one on Halloween. They don't remember shit. It's just a pain in the ass. But I remember, like, we had a bucket full of candy. And my fat, chunky ass went and bought the good candy because I was determined if anybody stopped by at my goddamn house, I was going to be the cool parent that had fucking good candy. Flip side, well, yeah. nobody stopped by my house. I was the parent so who had fucking kidding. good candy. <laughs> I I want to say I bought it for them, but realistically, it was a failsafe of, well, I eat this. They don't come, then I'm eating it. Well, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you're going to buy the candy that you're eventually going to eat because a lot of times you don't run out of the candy. You have you have extras always a lot of times. Out. Always ran out. That's Yeah. So we, we had one year. We were living in a townhouse, and our first, I think it was our first, Halloween there, and our son was sick, so we didn't go. My daughter wasn't born yet. But our son, my son was sick, and so he couldn't he couldn't go. So he's like, "Can we pass out candy?" I said, "Sure." Not one person came to the house. Oh. He was dressed up as Harry Potter, and he was devastated. Oh, and we're like, "Don't worry about it. We'll go out, and you know, we'll do something next year." Blah blah. So we sat there, we ate candy, we watched, you know, scary movies, like Goosebumps. That night to fucking, <laughs> since he was a little kid, <laughs> we watched, we watched just that stuff. But man, it was, it was devastating for him. Cause he's like, nobody's coming. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I can't yeah. get anybody to come here. But like we had the porch light on and we would flicker it and everything. Like we're here. We <laughs> come here. That, that first year, like we had our daughter, uh, we, I went all out. I didn't have the inflatables because again. We also just had our daughter earlier that year, so we were still paying off uh, the, the hospital bills. Oh, yeah. um, and we were both working full-time, so it didn't really matter. But anyways, I mean, we went as out as, as much far out as we could. You know, we had the spider webbing on our three bushes up front. We had the Halloween lights. We had those. Uh, uh, five Below just came in at the, around that time. We had the stakes that you could plant in the ground. We had fake bones, all that, like, I went as far out as I could. I even had like hanging Frankenstein witches and everything. When you pass them, they screech. And my God, did they screech throughout the night and scare the shit out of me regularly. <laughs> but I remember, I remember that year. Cause again, your first child being born, you remember a lot of the, the big events that you don't really partake in because they're so young, but it's more for you type thing. And I remember Halloween, like, Went out bought all the candy, went out bought all the decoration. And on our street, there was actually a lot of adults, like parental adults, not college kids. And I remember like, yeah, we're going to, I see all these kids. I, every day we're driving, I always see kids. And literally the only kid that stopped off at our house was our next door neighbor who was a hot mess to begin with. But she brought her kid by and he pounded on the door and it, we've already been like trick or treating technically happened for an hour at this point. And he's probably five, six years old, really cool outfit. It was a, a X-Men character. I don't remember which now, but it's an X-Men character. I remember me being my dorky, goofy ass self. It's like, Oh man, that's a really cool costume. You're this X-Men, blah, blah, blah. Huh? Whatever. You're can to get the fuck out of here. Pretty much. He's like, just, I want my candy and I, I remember like oh, okay well here's a handful of candy and i remember just being told hey why better the kids come by been an hour been an hour you're good but like i was upset because like are you fucking kidding like we had the i had the porch lights i had signs on my window like little sticky window decal things that said trick-or-treat uh we had a cheesy ass open for business thing, grab candy now. Uh, there was one point where, like, we were going to bed because, you know, the child was seven months old. Exhausting. Uh, mm -hmm. I put a bowl of candy out. So I said, take some. Not yep. take one, just fucking take some. Just take some. All still there in the morning. Really? All was still there in the morning. 
And I just, I remember being like a little disappointed because, again, as a dad and also somebody who loves Halloween and seeing all of that and see the joy, the happiness, the, the enthusiastic behavior of children, you know, having an unstifling amount of freaking candy. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to help you just be sugared up for the next fucking two months. Yeah. And not having it's like, oh, what the fuck? And there, there yeah, we started see, discovering all the trunk retreat, shop here, trick or treat events. And we're like, ah, oh, this town why. doesn't do this. Okay. This town yeah, sucks so ass. <laughs> I have, I go as far as I have, I know we have a full size candy bar. So I don't give full size candy bars out. I, you know, go by like the, the, the mix or whatever. Yeah. But I will have some uh, some full size ones because I I look for like the really cool costumes. Yeah. If they have one that like, I think last year I was looking for like a really good like Pennywise and things like that. If they come up with like really good costumes. I'm like, all right, you're one of the better ones, and I'll give them a full size candy bar. But I try I try to do it when it's not like a big group of kids because I'm like, oh, where's mine? Like, no, fuck you. Your costume sucks. Go tell your parents to you know do something better. Type thing, but. Good costume, good costume, good costume, good <laughs> costume. <laughs> <Once Hold on. laughs> amazing fucking costume. No, you're did you hear you guys said good fucking amazing? Come on, guys, Do level up. Step up your game next year. <laughs> so we have and I, I go as far as trying to scare the shit out of people too. So we have a spider that we set up right by our front steps, and it's a motion sensor. And so if you come up to it at the right spot. It jumps up at you. I mean, it extends no. a good three or four feet from that, it. That spider would be gone oh as an adult. God. That I love it. It Ow. scared so many kids. And I, I, there is a small part of me that feels bad about the little kids get scared, but inside I laugh a little harder. But just seeing it happen, because I'll, I'll look out the window and I kind of like, around the corner, like I'm looking like, oh, it's going to get you, going to get you. <laughs> Got the <you>, bitch. <laughs> But seeing it happen, it's just, it's great. So, and we've had it for like three years, but people every year, it's the same people. It still gets them. That's, that's the funny part too. You don't like know you what don't you remember. had for breakfast and you're expecting these people to remember what happened 365 days ago. I have a shitty memory. Ago. I have a shitty memory. And you expect these children who go to school and There's deal with adults other too. shit. And you're an There's adult. There's adults too. That's not called the... Don't cloud the issue with your facts. It's not what I'm talking about. Take your logistical facts out of this. But yeah, yeah going going around with everything how it is now with all the decorations and everything. Are you are you dressing up with anything similar to what your kids or a theme style with your family or kids? No. If, if we are if, you dressing up? Uh, not this year. Um, when I was working retail, I would dress up um, and. When I was working, the last two years I worked at at t there was a couple girls there who were really big into, like, doing the the latex makeup and everything on. And I had no plans for that Halloween at all. It's like my daughter's third birth, uh, third Halloween, fourth Halloween, whatever. She was three. And I remember them being like, hey, we really want to do Two-Face on you is there any way you or your wife would be okay with that and i still had a beard going on i was like yeah sure just don't fucking touch my beard like don't put this latex in my beard because i've <laughs> seen this on uh, some youtubes i watch where the the guy will pull it up and there's always like facial hair on it so i like, don't like your cut off it's literally my cheekbone don't go yeah. below my cheekbone and that year um i had a full-on just latex quarter face because you know my beard and yeah. it looked like everything was just being pulled away and melting down. It actually scared my daughter, who was of, of um, why can't I think of the fucking group of mythical people? Uh, Wonder Woman, is it? Uh, God damn it. Anyways, she had a shield, she had a spear. She was a mythical... God damn it. Help me out here anytime you want. It's a lot better to watch you try and think this. I will remember this in like 20 minutes. I'm going to shout it out. But anyways, <laughs> total opposite. I was a villain. My daughter was this innocent princess warrior thingy. Um, 
And then my wife couldn't dress up because her work didn't allow at the time. So we had you know three different things. But anytime we dress up, it's basically what we want to dress up as individually. So like this year, my son is going as Woody from Toy Story. And he is like hella fucking excited about it. He got to try his costume on the other night. We took pictures and he was, he was excited. I Woody, I Woody. <laughs> he's not wearing his cowboy hat straight. It's like cockeyed on his head. And he says, I'm Woody, I'm Woody, I'm Woody. And he, three years old, he's just absolutely loving it. And then my five-year-old is going as a unicorn princess type thing. So she's loving that as well. But she was upset, though, this year because she wanted to go as a mummy. And we could not find a costume for a five-year-old as a mummy. The smallest size we could find in our area I'm not driving outside my area. It's too fucking far. Driving outside my area, the closest we could find was like a small adult. And she is not a small adult. I mean, you are, but she's still shorter than you. <laughs> you you could have resorted back to your old school days and you could have taken, I mean, no, we burlap sacks. Well, we weren't going to do burlap. We were going to go get her a... a and we Old asked paper. her... Yeah, we were going to go with toilet paper roll, basically. Well, we were going to get tissue paper because toilet paper is expensive now. Uh, we were going to go get her a white sleeve, like long sleeve and long yeah. pants, and just tape tissue paper or uh, streamers off of her. And I have, you know, spray paint everything. I have brown, I have yellow, so I can make it look like it's dingy. Uh, and when we told her that, she's like, yeah. And then literally last week, she goes, I don't want to be a mummy. Why? I don't want to make it. You won't make it. I'll make it. I'm at home all damn day. I'll make it. And no, I don't want daddy to make it. <laughs> Fuck you then. I won't make it. And my wife chimes in. I'll make it then. It's fine. I have a week off. And she's like, okay. Middle of the week. I don't want to be a mummy. All right. Well, she's not being a mummy. She's already said this twice. That's like, that's fine. One time she can say no. She doesn't fucking know. But if she says it more than once at that point, we're like, okay, she really doesn't want to be. So we took her to Target and we're like, literally pick out whatever outfit or costume you want. And she found a mummy one for a freaking small adult. And it was huge <laughs> on her. And I told her, I was like, hey, you know, military, we learned how to do basic essential sewing. So I was like, I can take this in. I know how to do that. No, I don't want you to sew my costume. I don't want you to make my costume and put it up. Options: Put it up or let your dad sew. <laughs> so she put it up and she took a unicorn. <laughs> but I mean, they're excited though. They absolutely love Halloween. I mean, granted, this is my son's first one. She he's truly excited for, and he's like actively participating in it. Yeah. Um, but my daughter always loved ha Halloween throughout the entire year. Is this Halloween? Is it Halloween? <laughs> Favorite movies: Nightmare Before Halloween. She loves Jack Skeleton. And the tattoo I have of Jack Skeleton, every time she sees it, that's Jack. No, just wait. I'm going to get Wishbone one these days, too. <laughs> or Zero. Sorry, Zero. Thinking about the dog now. Zero. We got, uh, so we, we just watched Hocus Pocus 2. Okay, so you're on the same boat I am. Okay. I haven't Did watched like it. it I, I, okay, so I'm going to say okay. something very controversial. Oh, boy, here we go. I don't like Hocus Pocus at all. I thought the first one Ooh. was complete and utter dog shit. Waste of my adolescent years. Should have never watched it. That's time I'll never get back. It should have never been me a second one. The first one I didn't mind. The second one I was not a fan of. It was all, it's, it's forced. Enjoyable for the family, but it was, I won't watch it again. Um, no, it was forced because the freaking, our people, our age people, like, you got to make another one. It was such a good movie. No, it's not. It was not a great movie. It was an okay movie. It, in my opinion, I think Hocus Pocus is one of the shittier fucking Disney Halloween movies, but come at me. Could be. I got my I TikTok say... video taken down for calling Hocus Pocus shit, but whatever. <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't think it's absolutely a dog shit movie. I do. I enjoy it. Um, I think, I mean, obviously, family-wise, I think our biggest one is probably Beetlejuice. Yeah. 
that's one that we watch a lot. We just watched um, that on Saturday with my daughter. My daughter finally watched Under Wraps was another Disney movie about a mummy. The original one or the new one? Uh, yes, the original one. Okay. They, no, I don't watch that new shit. The original one is one that she that she enjoyed. It was funny. Um, she never seen it before, so, and she enjoyed that one. We watched Nightmare for Christmas, not Nightmare for Halloween. I said Nightmare for Christmas. You said Nightmare for Halloween. Whatever, I said Christmas. And <laughs> you said Wishbone. I did say Wishbone because I was thinking of the Wishbone PBS show that I really like too. I want that as and a then, tattoo. Oh shit, that's an old fucking show. Don't you diss Wishbone? Oh, God, that was a good uh, educational show. I didn't even know it was educational back then. That's well, yeah, it was a PBS. There was another one too that we can. That's a uh, whole different topic. Fuck. <laughs> now I'm gonna think about it. A fucking typewriter and shit, whatever. Anyways, <clears throat> Arthur was ahead of its time too. Yeah, uh, it was. It was. See, so we had Beetlejuice, Hocus Pocus, Nightmare Before Christmas, which is a Halloween movie. I'm not arguing that. I, I will say. Hard. I will say it's both. But we, I, I can agree that, but I put it more on a Halloween movie than I do a Christmas movie. Yeah, but we watch it, it during Christmas as, as well. Hall- it starts off in Halloween Town, and he goes, "Oh, he has a midlife crisis. Let's try something new." He does. He has a fucking yeah. midlife no, crisis. He, does. he goes. I'm not arguing that. And takes over Santa Claus's land, Christmas mm-hmm. Town, and he goes, "Oh, I fucked up. I'm gonna stick to my path. I'm, I'm the king, the pumpkin king of Halloween." So. It, it's both, but it is, it is a Halloween and fight us on this. I, I want somebody to fight me on this because I've been making TikTok. I, I'm going to say something that a lot of people don't like, but it's, uh, it's, it's a Halloween. Focus. It's a Halloween version of the Grinch. Oh, I love that theory, though. Like, it makes so much fucking sense when you look at, like, mm-hmm. the actual, like, the story and progression of everything. Like, it makes uh-huh. perfect sense. Yep. So, the only one I can't get two behind is max is zero and that's just simply because it's more of me going uh zero is a ghost sheet dog not a dog on four legs but clay animation or uh, animation, you couldn't have done that as easily with four legs yeah well i think those are the main three that we watch i can't think of really other ones we watch as a family for Halloween. Hmm. Um, oh, Ernest Scared Stupid, we do watch. That one I love. Because uh, growing up watching Ernest movies, Those were they were corny as shit, they but so they were good. great. And some of the shit that he says in those shows, Ernest movies, were, were funny as hell. And they're, then they're so much better as adults, though, because then there's so much inside humor that she's like, There are. All right. And then, but it's it kind of had like, and I would say that one is scarier than Goosebumps, but not a horror movie. Um, and I guess you though, I mean, Goosebumps is another one that they'll watch, but I don't know if there's anything else, one else but. So, but do you watch just so movies fun. on Halloween, like for Halloween, or do you actually watch like the Halloween specials of shows? Like, I know there's no shows we watch anymore that have Halloween specials. Like there's The Simpsons, but like Treehouse of Horrors. That we watch, but like, what other shows are to watch anymore that have Halloween specials that are even decent? I have no idea. I like, mean, we watch we watch PJ Masks Halloween episode, Mickey Mouse's Halloween episode. But again, my kids are okay. five and three, soon to be six and three, different age group completely. Uh, but I also like, even personally, I will watch a lot of the old Halloween specials. Uh, and Rome, huh? Charlie Brown. Yeah. That's pumpkin. a great pumpkin. Yep. I, my kids watch that. We watch that every year. Uh, we also watch you know, Nightmare Before Christmas because that's mm-hmm. my favorite show. That's my kids' favorite show. Um, we watch Beetlejuice. We watch... Um, oh, God damn it. I can't even think of it now. I have a whole thing on Netflix and Disney that I literally just... It's my list I go to. Uh, but then I watch a lot of the old TGI Friday stuff. Like, you know, Sabrina, the Boy Meets World, uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark, um, uh, Goosebumps, the TV show, not the movie, because the TV shows back then on Nickelodeon, 
are actually scary compared to the movie. <laughs> so they got away with a lot of shit back in the nineties. Um, yeah, but like I, I let them watch a lot of that stuff. Um, to a degree, there is some of it where like because of how overactive my child, my oldest daughter's imagination is, where I'm like, ah, you can't watch this. I won't let you. Yeah. Um, it's not because it's scary, it's just because she has an overactive imagination. Um, and I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night by a child just randomly staring over me. I bet just... <sighs> <laughs> Oh, you got so lucky. Go wake your mom up. Can't do this to dad. Why? I will punch you. It'll be an involuntary re- response. Gets me every time. There's not many shows, though. I mean, there there are some. Uh, Monster Squad's another movie that we watch, and that's when my my daughter won't watch that one just because it's a little more violent than what I want her to watch right now, being five. But like my my I son watches Deadpool, so <laughs> oh well. I mean, that's cool. I mean, you can watch Pulp Fiction next and you'll be fine. So <laughs> we're a don't swear at school type of family. <laughs> oh no, yeah, that's I'm totally fine with that. Come at me for bad parenting. I don't care. I'm not no, your child. No, not at all. <laughs> no. Um, but she also has that kind of imagination to where she'll yeah. think stuff, but also she will play on her emotions at the same time. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm scared. Like, no, you're not. Yeah. Yes, I am. No, you're not. This okay. So your kid, your daughter's a little bit older than mine. Uh, a little bit, I believe. She's five now. So oh, never mind. I just figure your short old ass had an older kid, older daughter. But anyways, uh, so yours probably does the same thing because you and your wife both put the kids down at different times, I'm assuming, or not. Like, you do it, she does it, you do it, you, she does it. Or is it just I put you? my kids down all, all the time, like, uh, oh, you're talking about to bed. Yeah, to bed. Oh, you no, know, I, I was going to say I put them down, like, as soon as they wake up, I put them down. <laughs> um, Shh. <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll take, I mean, we do take turns at times, like, whenever, but yeah. So, like, so maybe, maybe your daughter does this. Um, I know mine does. It drives, it drives us up the wall. Like, if I put my kids to sleep, easy. Piece of cake. They sleep through the night. No issue. My wife puts my kids to sleep. Fucking World War Three breaks out. <laughs> Get my three-year-old who's just screaming bloody murder or... Uh, I call it putting on production because that's very what very much what it makes me think of is a play or a production. My three year old will play on my my wife's emotion. You know he's being all cute and cuddly. I just want to sit with you. And that's fine because you know my wife works full time. I stay at home, and you know I get it. But then you have my daughter, who is perfectly fine throughout the whole fucking goddamn day. And at night, if my wife puts her, or they want my wife to put her, put them to bed, I'm scared. There's not enough lights. My kids' room, both of them, but most of my daughter's room, has four different sources of light. That's not including an actual like plug-in night light thing. That's like, I have some five dollar LED light strips that was intended for my office. It's not in her room. So she has LED strips over her canopy bed that her her nana, my mother in law, bought her. And so she has these lights. She has her alarm clock that now radiates RGB lights. She may be a gamer, by the way, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then she has these random little like I don't know I don't know where they came from, but candles, battery operated candles, she has those thrown throughout the the room too, to a point like I cannot sleep in her room because of how bright it is. There's just too much light for me. I sleep in pitch black. But if one of those candles, something's not bright enough, it's too dark. I'm afraid. I'm scared. And then she gets really creepy. <laughs> oh, again, I've said this several times, especially this month. Uh, I'm not saying I believe in paranormal. I can't prove it exists. I can't prove it doesn't exist. It's fucking unknown. However, that doesn't mean my overactive imagination ass doesn't like to fuck with me on a mentally unstable activity-wise. 
uh, like the other week, my, my wife put my daughter down and she's like, I can't go to bed. There's monsters on my bed. Whatever. Easy. There's monsters. It's easy. Well, it doesn't exist. Prove it. She won't. And she'll point. She'll be like, she won't let me go to sleep. Points in the closet. I was like, shine. You gotta go do this. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm out. I'm, I'm out. out. I'm out. I'm done. And it's like, and there's been, there, there's been, there's, again, I don't know if your daughter does this, but my daughter does this all the time when my wife puts her to bed. And it's become such a staple, though, where it's a, if you don't go to bed, I'm getting your dad in here. Do you want dad to come in here? <laughs> no. I don't want dad. Don't make dad come in here. Go in there. Hey. What time is it? It's been time. All right. What the fuck are you doing still up then? I'm sorry. I'm going to sleep. I love you, Mom. A hug. <laughs> like my daughter. Pain in the ass. My son, however, it's that fine line of pain in the ass and funny. Like he puts on a production for my wife. And my wife will, you know, tolerate for a little bit. And then finally she's like, okay, time for bed. And just chucks him in the crib and walks away. And he'll cry. I'll go back in there, give him a hug, say, hey, okay, buddy. Lay down. We'll do something fun tomorrow. Most of the time it's just he, he's coming with me. I'm going to go get me a soda from the gas station or go get my wife coffee, whatever. Something easy. But every time he gets put back down, you can hear him giggling or talking to himself. Or saying to himself, because that makes me feel better. But he's talking. And occasionally, if I'm getting ready to leave the house, or say I go take a shower, or here's my wife and I talking, Hey! Go to bed! You go to bed! Bed, bed! Go to bed! And he's yelling at us, from his crib, to go to bed. Go to sleep. Or shh! <laughs> and then there's my ass that's like, Hey! Roro! Go to bed! No! You go to bed! No! Row it! Go to sleep. No, you go to sleep. It's just a fight of words. Or I can growl at him <laughs> and just be like, <laughs> and he'll growl back. And it's just that for like 20 minutes of him and I doing it. And by the end of it, my throat hurts. My my voice hurts and everything. I sound like I smoked 12 packs that one day. <laughs> but it's like, it's that fine line of, you're fucking annoying. You need to go to sleep. But this is also funny as hell, so I'm going to stay up and, and keep you up, so. <laughs> so no, I mean we'll, t- we'll take turns and it's pretty much the same thing is that we don't have like we can't threaten our kids with like oh dad will come in here or mom will come in here it's kind of like okay and then they'll give me a hug okay or no how about you go to bed well but they'll get really methodical. Like, so I need something to color. I have what do homework. we need? What do we need for tomorrow? Like, if, what do I have? I have something going on tomorrow. My daughter will sit there. She'll think about it, like, yeah. So I, what are we doing tomorrow? Like, you're going to school, but I don't want to go to school. You're going to school. But what if I No, you're going to school? Yeah. But what if no, no, what if you're going to school tomorrow? That's it. You go to sleep, lay down. What if okay. you go to sleep and we go to school tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you lay down or I'll put you down. How about that? So what? Like, no, just lay down. Lay down. Lay down. And they st- stare at me. Oh, no. They grab their head. Lay down. Shh. Lay down. I do, I do do that to my daughter occasionally if she's, like, being a pill. I just like, shh. shh. Oh, and yeah. Push her head in the pillow. She's just. <laughs> I, had, I, my, I don't know what it was. She was laying down one time and she was going to start, like, just pop up and start talking like Undertaker style. She came up, she popped up, and I said, Nope. And <laughs> put her back down. Of course, she starts laughing and giggling the entire time. I'm like, Damn it. I'm like, My son enough. does that right now. Go to bed. My son does that shit right now. I'll, I'll, I'll lay him down. Well, one, I can't just lay him down. He fucking kamikaze. He's it like, I'll go over the crib and he just goes, and he jumps backwards. So it's like trying to fucking catch a football. But I'll place him down and he, he'll sit up, take her style, you know, just from laying to sitting. I'll grab his face, shh, go back to sleep. 
Shh, go back. <laughs> and it gets to the point where it gets drawn up where he just lays down. And if I walk away far enough, he just goes, Shh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, gotta go to sleep. God damn, this is funny. My yes. daughter doesn't do that, so. No, there. My daughter now has has the bad thing of coming in at night. Like I can't sleep. No, no, I can't either. Thanks. Like you can go back to bed. But like for a while, for a long time, it was she would come to my side, and I have to get up, take her back to bed, come back. You know, she and it'd be an ongoing thing the yeah. entire night. So other times I just go in there, I just lay lay in her bed. Under under her bed, she has a loft bed, so I just lay her under it. Like, okay, I'm here, cool. Then I wake up the next morning, I can't walk because I slept on the floor. My back hurts, my legs hurt, all every joint doesn't want to work. So I'm like, you have to stop doing this. But does she have so night she, terrors or? No, she just wakes up. Oh, okay. No, no nightmares. Lucky she you. she will try and say she has nightmares. She's like, no, no, not nightmares. Night. Oh, night terrors. terrors. No, she doesn't. I I had those growing up. Three years in a row so far. Yeah, I had those bad when I was younger. And I would wake up screaming, yelling, sweating like crazy. But it only happened, I figured it out as I got older. It's when I would overheat is when my my mind would just, like, freak out. Yeah. Because I'd wake up just, like, sweating, and I, I would see what I was either. I went to bed with a sweatshirt and sweatpants on and then blankets and everything else. And then I woke up and sweat my ass off. Uh, we See, that's the thing. It's like growing up, and like, night and day difference for my wife and I. I never had those issues. I we also only were allowed to sleep with uh, a top sheet and a comforter, and the house was always set to like sixty sixty five, so it was cold. And there was like you're not eating extra blankets; it's top sheet and comforter. That was it. Whereas like right now, I can't have a top sheet on my bed and a comforter because somebody's claustrophobic and gets tangled up in them, and she panics and she freaks out, and I get hit. That's not even the worst part. But uh, so we have like a comforter. But yeah, I have my house very, I have my house on like 65, 68. Because scientifically proven, you sleep better in the cold when it's chilly. Yes. Not freezing cold, but when it's chilly, you sleep better, you get better night's rest. Look it up. It's been statistically mm-hmm. and scientifically proven. So I do that. But my daughter, on the other hand, I have my blanket. I have my comforter. I have this other blanket. I have this Minnie Mouse blanket. I have this blanket that Nana gave me. And I have this elephant blanket. Girl, you need to stop. Take all that off. Pick one to two blankets. And of course, the other side of the conversation from the other half is, no, it's fine. She says she's cold. If she just takes the blankets off, she'll sleep better. Mm-hmm. And I've proven so many times with saying, no, sorry, you can't have these blankets. When I put her down, and she sleeps better through the night. But what did I know? I'm just her dad. Nope. It's... I'm just 27 plus years older than my daughter, but whatever. And that's another podcast that we could have, too, of the, the husband-wife <laughs> stuff. We could have a long one on that one. Yeah, we could be a fucking month of that one. But, but, like, the, the sleeping stuff. But, like... Well, like, especially like right now, because like my October's so packed because I have a kid's birthday there the like second week of October, and then I have Halloween, and I have a bunch of little filler stuff. But all year round, this is the month my kids look to the most because of the candy. Over and Christmas? Because, oh, yeah. Because guess, really? guess who likes candy in this house? You? This fat fuck. <laughs> You're a fucking child. Halloween and Easter. <laughs> but like, and that's the funny thing. Like we don't, I'm not going to get into why, but we don't do the whole, we celebrate Easter, but we don't do the whole like religious aspect of it. That's what um, we don't either. But I do it for the candy. <laughs> we don't really do Easter. Well, I mean, we do like East, like the, we'll wake up in the morning and like, oh, the Easter bunny came and there's a, he shit uh, eggs in your yard. So go pick those up. Yeah, we do. Type thing, but that's uh, really all we do. So, like, I don't like Easter. Well, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's a wasteful holiday. I think I don't know. For every Catholic. religious person, with that, with every religious person out there is now scoffing at me and now unsubscribing from our podcast. Thank you. We just lost all five of hey, you. Hey, hey, I, I was religious. I was forcefully was. religious. <laughs> forcefully religious. 
But no, like, um, we'll talk about Easter a whole other day. But I mean, for like October, though, it's like that's our that's my kids' month because it's spooky, it's scary, and she's also mm-hmm. one like I probably will end up watching a lot of horror movies because of her, and I'll have to be that that macho man. I'm not scared of anything, and then have to go talk to my wife. Oh my god, I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> I just watched oh, a show. Yeah. Never hold me. It's just like, hey, I'm not sick of the night. We just watched Goosebumps. <laughs> Freak the fuck out of me. <laughs> there was a monkey. <laughs> he was scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, I could, I could see that because, like, I was, I was watching the Thirteenth Ghost one night that my wife had to work late, and my daughter woke up, snuck into the living room, Damon here, and she watched probably maybe five minutes of it. And it scared the ever loving shit out of me just by going, What's that, Dad? Holy fucking crap. Oh. <laughs> oh, Hi. Um, how long have you been there? I don't know. She Since can't I tell saw time. the girl that's cut up with the big boobs. No, she's, she's like, I don't know. Because she can't tell time. So, 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 I don't know. Oh, okay. Pause it. What's up? What do you need? I am hearing noises. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> it's fine. They're not real. Because <laughs> it's everything in my power not to go, I'm watching something scary, and you're telling me there's something in your room. No. <laughs> Doesn't Boy, the noises are me screaming. <laughs> no, I'm very like chill about it, but then that night, I, like my wife came home uh, near the end of the movie. She's like, what are you watching? 13th ghost. You know, it's like 9.30 at night, right? Yeah. But kids are asleep. And it had to have been last week or two weeks ago because I remember saying, Raga and I were talking about or Luke, your name, and I were talking about it, and he, she's like, so you decided to watch it? Uh, I had to. <laughs> Raga, like, Raga's giving me shit because I'm not watching mm-hmm. horror movies, and this is a good horror movie. I like this horror movie. And now it's, it so, is a good it, one. it's so much more intensified because now I have a true overactive imagination versus my child's imagination. It's evolved with me. Oh, it's, yeah, it's me every time. That, but she saw some of that, so I could definitely already see her be like, I want to watch this. I want to watch that. Went, oh, really? Well, I got to go talk to your mom really quick. So I'm not sleeping tonight. <laughs> Why? Now we have mental issue or scary movie. <laughs> both. <laughs> Mostly a scary so my, movie, but both. Yeah. My, <laughs> my son is going as Sam from Trick or Treat this year. Okay. He hasn't seen the movie yet, but I've talked about him, and so I'm allowing him to watch it, and he's probably not going to sleep for a week after watching it but it's his choice he wants to watch it so we'll see how he handles that one i'll report back because it's probably going to be this weekend when he watches it and i'm gonna do it at night i'm not i'm not tuning in the next episode back. he's he is uh when i traumatize my son into <laughs> never wanting to watch a movie again he's watching it at night you know my, my obviously my daughter will be in bed uh but my daughter so is going think- as is going as pennywise and we have the outfit and everything for her. I'm going to go as Georgie. Has she seen and, it? Oh, hell no. I don't like But she's seen, something she doesn't she's know. seen Pennywise. No, she's seen before. your damn Funko Pop Pennywise. Oh, she's seen that, yeah. But she's seen pictures of everybody else, too. But she likes that stuff. My, so I, I think I'm in the same boat as you when it comes to, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it as my daughter watching Not horror movies. Boat. Not same boat. But... My, same boat as your daughter wanting to watch them. I think mine will as well. Um, my son, not as much. Um, my older son, he's, he's really not into him that much either, but I think she's going to be into him a little bit more. So she wants to do Pennywise. I'm gonna, I have the raincoat and everything already set up for Georgie. I just don't know yet if I'm going to cut my the sleeve off and make it as if his arm is bitten off or just go with this the rain jacket. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out what I want to do. I'm you, thinking about just cutting it off. Well, why don't you, why don't you, um, I don't know how hard it'd be, but basically have a fake arm 
to go up the sleeve that your daughter can hold it and then when she gets up to the house to go trick or treat she can just pull it and that arm goes off with the bottom half of the raincoat and makes it look bloody and that could go like that could go too that's, <laughs> like, that's what happened in it right yeah Pennywise takes the arm yeah okay sir. yeah See, I'm not. I'm not quite sure what we'll do. That's. I mean, that's. That's an idea I thought about too. Because they do have the, also the trick or treat bags that are that are a hand with the sack underneath it, inside the hand, type thing. But I don't know. We'll see. We got a yeah, few. Yeah, my whole sack. You weeks. Hand. Yep. I don't want to say it to my daughter at all. <laughs> no. Well, speaking of that, speaking of... <laughs> whoa! whoa, whoa. No, <laughs> just hear me out. So. We okay. were sh- we were shopping for my daughter's outfit uh, costume at Target. They have those trick or treat bags. My mm-hmm. son found one that has music on it, so you just push the fucking button over, 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 over <laughs> it. But all I hear is, "Dad, sack in that hand," and I just like big old grin. It's like, yes, there's a bag on the grin or on the hand. <laughs> it just looks up. What? Another. <laughs> my stupid ass is the real that's funny you don't know what's going on man, yep. <laughs> no, it wasn't the same way it wasn't much later or longer that my wife's like are we done here no I want to go check out the candy <sighs> do we really need it no I want to go check it out though we need to check well it's easy because it's the time uh, the caramel apple suckers are in full abundance, and my wife loves those. So I'm just like, here's a bag for you. Oh, they're good. I won't. I won't knock them. I I like them, but I like she will. She will fight kids over them. She's oh, fought yeah. my. She's fought her nieces and nephews for them. Yep. My daughter for the yeah. Yep. She, yeah they but they've gotten fights over them. My my, my daughter. No, it's my son. My my wife had had a sucker in her mouth, and my son literally just came up and go takes it out of her mouth, and she's ah no. Mine. <laughs> and my daughter would be like, Can I have one? She'd be like, Well, one second. And she'll look through the bag and see how many she has. <laughs> right now, you can, yeah. But these are mommies. I was like, Oh, mommies. But dad has candy in his office, so it's not dad's. Get whatever you want. Don't touch my damn suckers. Pretty much. Pretty much. That's why I have a lot of sour candy. Candy normally is because nobody in my house likes sour candy, so. That for me, see, I like it. I love that. That's what I had. I try to have it. My kids like that shit too. No, my kids think they do, and then they go, "Ew, thanks for wasting that." Yeah, see, I don't have anything to like. Like Twizzlers were my thing, but my daughter now likes Twizzlers. We stop eating Twizzlers because my son smacks people with them, and they hurt. Well, yeah, no, like. I've been smacked by a it's grown bad. man by Twizzlers. Being smacked by a three-year-old by twi- with Twizzlers hurts so much worse because it's just unfathomable pain. My three-year-old just going Psh! really quick. He's like, mm, you motherfucker. God damn it. <laughs> Do you want to go to a timeout? Fucking bastard. God damn it. Bring it on. <laughs> He does. He's at that phase right now too, where it's like, "You want to go to timeout?" No, no. And he says something, but always with it. Always ends with "You Super Mario." What? Yeah, that started last week. I was like, "Super Mario." I mean, I am a little bit of Italian and Asian. I do have a mustache. I'm a little fat. I'm about to super kick you. Get in timeout. <laughs> He, I called him a Super Mario last night when he was supposed to be sleeping. I came home to go pee from door dashing. And I I heard him rumbling. I told him to go to bed. I was like, if you don't go to bed, you're Super Mario then. And it sounded like he called me Luigi. According to my wife, that's what it sounded like. I did not hear Luigi. I heard you were a butthole. <laughs> Those two sound nothing alike. No, they don't. But if you ever heard a three-year-old talk, you're also like, what was that? I know you can't say this letter really clearly, so maybe you were trying to say this letter. Yeah. Where do you have heard butthole from? Probably me. I was, was butthole. Oh, okay. Well, that's exactly where you heard from. Then. Never mind. 
I'm telling you, I'm a don't 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 cuss at people and don't cuss at school. I don't care. I don't care. And I, I've had my I think it's hilarious. Like my daughter, uh, she didn't stub her toe. Or the, we got a new kid two Fridays ago, last Friday. Two Fridays ago. I don't know. We got a new kitten recently. After the ninth that week. Or the Friday before the ninth. The sixth. Sweet Jesus, what day is it? Anyways, the Friday before the ninth, we got a, a brand new baby kitten, like two and a half month old. And very playful, and he got my daughter. Like jumped, clawed her. Bitch! <laughs> <laughs> I. I'm, I'm busting up laughing. So I'm like, yeah, that's appropriate response. That's I'm in mad. That's proper context, proper you usage. Use it correctly. I'm fine with that. And my my wife's laughing. She's like, hey, just remember, you can't say that at school. I was like, yeah. No matter how big of one they're being, you can't say that at school. Yeah. She's like what? Yeah. Does that mean that's also <laughs> my wife and I talk where we'll talk about her day or me doing work with clients. I'm like, God, this fucker. Or this stupid bitch, or this stupid other words that I won't say on podcasts. <laughs> they start with a C <laughs> and a T. <laughs> and and my daughter's picked up on that. She's like, what's that? So I'll use that as an adult, I promise you. Yeah. And it, we have, we have the same thing. It's like, I don't cuss very often unless I'm extremely upset. Um, mom, their mom will cuss occasionally. Like, it takes a lot for me to cuss. But around the kids, at least. I was like, it's any podcast. Other time, any other time, I'm, I'm talking like a fucking sailor. But my daughter, she uses it as a time. She's like, so there's a kid at school, and he said a word, and we know he can't say, like, fucker. And I'm like, you just, like, whoa, hold on. You didn't, like, ease me into it or anything. You just fucking flat out <laughs> said it. Like, like, hold on. Come back. And there's another time she's like, uh, I can't say it. Like, say it. Like, no, no, I can't say it. But the other time, she just literally comes out like, this son of a bitch, or I shouldn't say that, but like, just it's like, fucker, <laughs> bitch, and shit. Those are the three words that she knows, and <laughs> the way that she will fluently come out and say it to me sometimes, because she'll hear it, Yeah. because her uncle is, is uh, he just cuts around the kids nonstop. Yeah. Like, and fuck is like, a, it's the other, every other word for him. And it just it it makes me laugh so hard when she just fluently says it and uses it correctly, but other times she's like, "No, I can't say it. I shouldn't say it. I don't say this word." Yeah. Like, well, what word is it? You can say it. You're not in trouble. No, I shouldn't say it. I was like, "Just say it." Not you're you okay. Know. Not you're okay. I didn't know what they said. I didn't know if it's cool or not, so I can say it too, or it's just like, "No, don't worry about it." So I have to learn through you as well. But it's just some of the shit that comes out of her mouth. Yeah. It's crazy with little kids. I don't think she said she hasn't ever came home and said anything like that. But she's definitely like been at home where she has, you know, said all types of swear words. But they're always, for the most part, they're always in proper context and usage and never at someone. But she has called her little brother a dumbass <laughs> piece of shit. Oh my gosh. Uh, she, oh, she called him a shit stick a few weeks ago. Oh, shit stick. That's a good one. I know. She got the one from me. <laughs> I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what it was. So, playground, no other kids around. I have to preface that so hard. No other kids were around. But we're playing on the playground. It's an enclosed park type playground. And my son pushes my daughter and she falls and she just goes, You asshole. God damn. It just gets up. I was like, Come here, we need to talk. You can't call him that. Again, I don't mind if you swear, but we don't swear at people. Okay, we don't call him an asshole. Yes, he's being one, but you don't call him one, okay? Yeah, it's just, it just doesn't work that way. But the problem with that is that's a lot of, I don't do what I preach, because if he is being a major asshole one day, I will just call him an asshole. Or a shit stick, or a dipshit, because he's just like, 
how my frustration comes out. That's why, like, I can't be mad at my kids for swearing, but I'm, I'm very, like, dad doesn't swear in front of other adults that he does not know. Your dad will not swear in front of teachers. I just don't do that. Like, there's a, there's a respect slash learning curve for me where, like, if I hear another adult, like, we're at the playground the other, literally just Sunday, and, you know, dad, he was a single dad I found, but myself and just him playing with our two kids, at the, or his child, my two kids, we're all playing, and we're clearly walking that fine line of just talking and bullshitting with each other, seeing who's going to swear, how the other one feels, and I slipped up. I said, oh, yeah, they were being little shitheads this last week. And that guy, on a dime, let me tell you, this motherfucker, and, like, <laughs> calls her daughter, or calls his daughter the N-word, and he was not white, by the way. Uh, calls his daughter the N-word and said, this motherfucker just came up to me and punched me in the nads, and I pushed her over and she said, she said, Daddy, you can't do that. I said, fucking watch me. Hit me in my nads again. I'll push your little inward ass down again. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I I'm sorry. Shit made up about the floodgates. Like, I'm sorry. What? And my eyes literally went, like, I had sunglasses on. So all you could tell was my eyebrows. But my eyebrows went from just regular to just full on sand. <laughs> not the fact that he swears just the, the inward still catches me off guard and I feel like what the fuck <laughs> okay <laughs> it's like my children are around here I really don't want to like I don't know how to negate this one at all <laughs> you that mm -hmm, yeah good luck with that one yep. <laughs> so, but uh, he's a good guy kids were loving playing out and everything so it was fun but uh, even like he was asking because he's new to this area he was even asking about you know what do you guys do for Halloween? And I told him, I was like, oh man, you know, one, welcome to city sucks. We have college kids. Uh, but I was like, oh man, take your kid to everywhere, really. Like West Loop does something um, during the week of Halloween. You have East Loop does something. The mall does something. The Hy-Vee does something. There's trunk or treats at this Baptist church. There's trunk or treat at this Catholic church. There's trunk or treat at this, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, holy shit. That's all within like three days. Oh no, that's a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a week. So, oh okay, that's cool. And, and and it was just so <laughs> it was just so much fun. Like again, just showing and talking about all that stuff with him, and the language caught me off. And even then, he still like he called me it too, and I was like, I don't. I don't know how to respond to this. Go team. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> and afterwards, like, I, did, I, I, I ended up texting a couple of my friends. And I've known these guys for years. And to be fair, one I've known for since 2009. He's a gay black Jewish dude. And the way he put it, I'm the trifecta. I'm like, all right. His words, not mine. But I, I, I messaged I him. I was, like, I was like, hey, I'm in predicament. What do I do? <laughs> what do I do? I told him the whole thing. He's like, if it wasn't 2022, I would say you're safe. But don't do it. I was like, I don't want to <laughs> fucking do it. I'm that fucking weirdo that listens to rap songs. And the moment the word comes on, I was like, and next word. <laughs> But I was so concerned that day, like, my daughter over here, and I was like, gosh, she's going to fucking repeat this to my wife. I'm about to explain this whole thing to my wife. I don't know how to explain this to my wife. <laughs> so, where'd you take the kids to play today? Because the kids learned some new words. Or well, one new word specifically. Well, the school, so, like, when we went into school, or signed up for school, the, the teachers and everything were very clear about, hey... We have a very diverse group of kids in my daughter's class. She's like, hey, by the way, um, make sure you don't use, and I quote, any ethnically strong targeted words around your kids. So please make sure they don't use those words. So they understand you cannot say those words here at school because other children will use it, and that's not culturally appropriate. 
And of course, I was like, okay. And my one of my good friends, his daughter goes to my daughter's school, and he's like, the fuck do they mean there? And he's stupid as fuck. <laughs> what does he mean there? I was like, come on. He's like, I don't under what do you mean? I'm like, I'm not explaining this to you. I can't. Yeah. Go Google it. <laughs> that pulled up some like 1950 shit. Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, not the word you were looking for, but same path. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Such a fucking tangent. We barely talked yeah. about Halloween, but yeah, Halloween's drafted hey, really that's, different. Really. That's, yeah. I mean, from when we grow up to now, yes, it's way different, but still entertaining, still fun for the kids, and I do, I do find enjoyment in it as well. Well, yeah, because you get see all the enjoyment and excitement out of your kids. Yeah, and if you're like me, you're like <laughs> one piece of candy for me, one for you, two for me, one for you. Three for yep. me, one for you. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, that's shit. some of the some of the fun stuff of that way. But then also trying to figure out the every year trying to figure out the newer movies to watch that they can handle, and then trying to see the costumes that they want to coordinate at that point too. Because you know it just gets more and more fun every year. Costumes, like I don't want to say they suck, but uh, we realized this year. We don't like them. Me and my daughter wanted to go something that's spooky and scary, and that's not very much a five-year-old's genre to be in. So unless you go to a specialty store or you go to specialty online, you're not gonna find it. And they also tend to be a lot, a lot of money, very expensive. Yes. Uh, so even like the mummy costume we're looking for my daughter, we went on Amazon. It was like 40, 50 bucks. I was like, no. They're not cheap. Like I can't, and we have. I have an easier time now justifying it, even for like forty dollars, fifty dollars costume. Like, okay, you're gonna wear it seven days. Okay, that's like you know, eight nine yeah. bucks a piece. Cool, whatever. I'm fine mm-hmm. with that. But I like. I was talking to my wife about this. Like, I could never imagine asking my parents, "Hey, I want to be this." By the way, it's a fifty dollar costume. It's like the year I went as a prostitute, my dad and mom almost lost their goddamn mind because they're like, we're not buying you the bra. We're not buying you the padding. We're not buying you the shirt. We're not like, they weren't going to buy me any. I know it sounds really weird, but they weren't going to buy me any of that stuff. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. So what did I do? So what do I do? I was... Let's just say I had a lot of female friends. I did not get around. I just had a lot of female friends because, again, that era, I had a gay brother. I looked like my gay brother, just, you know, three inches shorter height-wise and about 40 pounds heavier. And everyone just assumed I was gay. So I had a lot of girls. I'd be like, hey, you want to go shopping? Hey, you want to go do this? Uh, Yeah, let me check with my girlfriend. She'll be fine. No, I need like check with my Girlfriend, like one word. One one word. Not girl hyphen friend, not girl hi- space friend. Like the girl I'm going out on dates with. Uh, I just had to ask a couple of them, like, hey, weird question. Can I borrow your bra? <laughs> Why? Well, I was gonna ask uh, this other person, but you're bigger. I'm going as a prostitute, so I need to have like bigger boobs. Would you mind? Help me out. No, 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 no. Here you go. Just know, and this is where I found a lot about women's clothing. Just know, prostitutes can do have, you know, that underwear thong go up above their love handles. What? No, I'm not wearing women's underwear. That's not happening. No, if you're going to do it, you have to do it authentically. No, 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 I'm not doing that. Get on school computer, figure out what they're talking about. I was like, that looks uncomfortable. That's not, that's not <laughs> pragmatic for a guy to wear. That's not happening. No. I got a bunch of clothes from just girls I knew. But hey, they willfully gave it to me. Proud of you. I'm proud of me too. <laughs> I'm proud of me the yearbook. <laughs> Oh, 
shit. I got an insect uh, somewhere. Yep. <laughs> You'll never notice me because I look so different. Hmm. You. I was like 170, 180. Now I'm like 220. And bearded. And dad bod. And dad bod. <laughs> Are you going anything as we wrap this episode up? Are you going as anything this year? I'll be, I'll be Georgie. Nope, I'll be Georgie. That's it. Uh, I do have another one of Sully because I was Sully and my daughter was Boo. So I have that full whole like, almost like... The actual like... You pajamas? Insert? Oh, okay. No, just a pajamas. It's just like a zip up. It's got the hood and tail, which my daughter finds hilarious that it has a tail on it. So she'll walk behind me and bat the tail around the entire time. Still. But yeah. That's about it for that. And then my wife has the Mike Wazowski one that she wears too. That she, this is zip up. What's she going as this year? She's going to be the, the Bette Midler from Hocus Pocus though. Uh, Winifred Sanderson sister. Okay. The main one. She that loves that. Match, but okay. Movie, so. No, she does her own thing. She's a, she's a, she's a strong, independent woman. She does her own thing. Okay, okay we're gonna do this. She's like, fine, I'll do this. That's that's the like, complete opposite. But okay, okay. I thought we were gonna do a that, family event, but no. Uh, that and her costume that she got was like a really expensive one, and so she has to wear it like every year. It's like a a nice whole get up thing, wig and everything. So yeah, she has to wear it. She has to, when we bought it, we're like, you have to wear this multiple times. She's like, okay, but I'll wear this yeah. throughout the year. What are you talking about? And she, <laughs> I come home in the middle of summer. She's dancing around the house, working, singing. Like, ah, oh, it's one of those days. Just forgot yeah, something at work. We'll leave, we'll leave mom here. Kids, come on. Shh. <laughs> come on. Oh, no. Hey, hey babe. Hey. I don't know where the kids we're gonna, are going. Just... We're going to go this way. They're leaving. I don't know where they're going. I'm going to go... They're uh, my car. I'm going to go get them, though, so... We'll, I'll be back in, like, five-ish, 20 minutes. You, you do your thing. <laughs> you do I'll you. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, no. I will say, I the older the kids get, the more I look, the more I look towards all these... Oh, yeah. ...more intricate costumes and... Uh, I mean, every year I ask my daughter the same thing: "Is do you want to like, you want to do something, Daddy and you?" No. Why? I don't like Daddy. Oh, okay. You like Daddy cool. when he has candy, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, fucking guy got shot. Go away. Jerk. <laughs> Jerk. Children are mean. Yes. They try to be. Mm hmm. Well, we have one more episode of this month, and I think you have trivia. I do. It will be planned. done, ready for next week. Even though it was supposed to be done two weeks ago. So. Yeah, I didn't do shit over the weekend, so. Me neither. Video probably won't be updated. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but in the meantime, you got anything else? Any, any other recommendations? The other shoes. Oh, I should do a candy wreck. There you go. Be involved. <laughs> no, I don't think I have any recommendations right now. I'm sorry. Who, does, who does the video? I think we. Who does the producing? Who does the editing? Who does the graphics? Who does the closed captions for six hours? Who does the uploads? Be more involved. Punk ass bitch. All right, I was stacking my gummy bears. What'd you say? Oh, why? So where you can look them eye to eye? Just get them six high and you'll be fine. I hope you stub your toe and knock your teeth front teeth out. I hope you run into a door. <laughs> That's it. I just hope you run into a door. It's a door. <laughs> I hope you run into the table. That is hard. That's, that's like hip height. That's not fun. Oh. That's only, shit hurts. That's only like, you know, 
knee height for me. I hate you. <laughs> Bullshit. You're not that fucking tall. Knee height. Coffee table. Cool. Who says I have a real table? <laughs> huh. We have a real table, but it's a uh, a table you use from retail, so it's not like standard table height. It's fucking tall. <laughs> yeah. It's like up to like mid chest. <laughs> oh. oh, great. So I'm hitting my forehead on it. Yeah, you would. Awesome. <laughs> like, I'm just going to go over here. Yeah. Oh. Concussion. <laughs> oh shit! No, I have nothing else. I don't have. I don't have any recommendations. I can think of. This was his month, y'all. This was his I, month. For a month, all we heard was it's been, it's been, it's been a week. It's been a week. It's been it's been a week. Well, all I gotta say a week. is after this next episode, I got some ideas for Thanksgiving. We're gonna do a food episode. All right. Yeah. I haven't figured out the logistics of it, but I'm going to do it. So. I might try it for a food episode. Let me say that because I don't make promises to anyone. Ask my daughter. <laughs> Pretty salty about it this week. <laughs> yeah. I think that's all we got for y'all. So thanks for tuning in on this week's episode. Let us know what you think. Make sure you hit the, the thumbs up, the plus, the uh, Follow, subscribe, whatever button it is on the podcast channel that you're listening to. And of course, go watch the other 18 plus episodes. Because this is episode 19. I don't think we said that at the top of the hour. Maybe not. It is episode 19. It is, yeah. We figured that out. So, thanks for watching. And we're going to have something big to close out the year. We have to. We're only like two months away from the end of the year. Got to do something. Yeah, we will. To figure it out, Roggle. Anyways, okay. <laughs> I'm on it now. As always, make sure you comment what you think about the episode. Follow us on social media, Two Guys One Gamepad, except for fucking Twitter. Twitter is two gamepads. Not important. Follow us everywhere else but Twitter. Uh, follow us on Facebook, where you sip the and comment on all of our posts and keep the interaction as well. Other than that, the average size person is done talking for the night. Let's hand it over to Short King as he signs us out. You can say Come Short King. You, you put King on it, so that works too. I got nothing else. All right, Get the fuck out of here. Let's go. All right, everyone. <laughs> Take care. Have a wonderful week. See you on the next Bye, episode. Bye, bitch.